Okay, it's been a week already, and we are continuing the Nth Room story. Um, after watching the first one, I was very, very disgusted, and towards the end, <clears throat> it turned into some more BS. Like, like, like it, it, it just added another layer of BS. There's a, there's a new challenger, like this guy, like. The doctor literally had a whole arch nemesis on some shit like this. Like, this is Batman and Joker. And the dude's name is God God. Y'all, this is the Nth Room Part 2. The episode is titled, Korean College Student Forces 100 Girls to Mutilate Themselves on Camera Live for His Chat Rooms. This is disgusting. Um, Yeah, this is this is a Rotten Mango video. Bada bing, bada boo. There was no point in any of the officers to even go home and sleep. Their desks are littered with empty coffee cups, cup ramen, and energy drinks. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're running out of time. So with every case, they inevitably feel a sense of urgency. We got to catch the robber. We got to hunt down the killer. But this is a different kind of urgency that they're feeling. This feels like straight up torture. Every few seconds, their phone would light up with another alert. Another video is being uploaded to the Telegram chat room. Jesus Christ. They would pick up their phones. It's another one. What is it this time? Mm -hmm. Another girl being forced to commit sexual acts with her little brother. Their phones would drop to their desk, and bro, it's such like, a defeating feeling. They feel like they're being taunted. So bro, it's like the, the nigga is really getting in like integrated in the family though he's fucking with the whole family as well as if like the first thing is just not enough like you can't why are you ruining families you're already ruining a a, a girl's whole life and you have to go to her family and one of you motherfuckers is doing it just because you just have fun with it like that's you you were like i said before in the last video firing squad with every photo or video, and there's a lot of them, they're coming up every few seconds, every few minutes at the latest, they're being uploaded into these illegal Telegram chat rooms. No and camera. the police felt like they would be time traveling, just teleported to the scene of a crime. They'd be outside of a house, staring through the window and watching people produce CP, mm. torture videos, abuse, humiliation. And then once the video is over, they're transported back to the police station. They have no clue who these girls are, where they are, how to catch them, who's doing this to them. They don't know anything. The police had just discovered a few months ago that there was dark web level activity on the surface web on an app called Telegram. There were organized crime rings all there to distribute real CP and torture videos. Mm. They first stumbled upon Gotham Room, oh which is God. a marketplace for chat room creators on Telegram to market their businesses. I mean, they had all sorts of rooms. So if you went to Gotham Room thinking, maybe I have a niche interest, no. you do not. Yeah, no. They have something for everybody disgusting. Oh, yeah, female nurse news. rooms, female military rooms, middle school girl live stream rooms. They have the Lolly Room, which mm. stands for Lolita Room. Mm. And those are just rooms that depict infants, small, tiny infants being filmed explicitly to be shared with depraved watchers. Oh, God. Once you find the, quote, room of your liking, the watchers, the buyers, they'll have to be vetted before being allowed into the Telegram chat room of their choosing. They were saying that they need proof that you're a man. I mean, we're not going to unpack that, but they think that in order to be a man, you need to have a very specific body part. And they want to see a photo of your body part next to your, your username. Dick. Then after providing proof of package, a government issued ID needs to be sent to the moderators. Then your own explicit video depicting your own wife, sister, daughter, niece, cousin, doesn't matter. That's that nuts. needs to be posted. That's nuts. And lastly, all that would be required is a crypto payment. Then you get sent a link. Mm. That link is your access point to that chat room. Once you have that link, you have the power. You can anonymously torture who they call the slaves. The girls that are being blackmailed, threatened, and forced into producing these CP torture videos, you can taunt them. You can threaten them. And for an extra fee, you can get their home address and physically go R-word them. Bro, that's fucking And that's nuts. just one chat room. There are hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands, of Telegram chat rooms providing these videos. And just like any other industry, there's buyers, mm -hmm. there's sellers, and then there's monopolies the brand names of the industry the most sought after chat rooms they belong to two anonymous creators the doctor 
and God God. Fuck both of them. The doctor runs the doctor's rooms, an expansive network of chat rooms that amass likely over a hundred victims. God God runs the nth rooms, the original torture chambers of the Telegram chat rooms. Mm. Now, even though the doctor has the more profitable business with a wider reach, God God has the reputation. Everybody wanted to be in the nth rooms. They were more exclusive, more personal. The doctor was all about money. You would have to pay, what, $1,200 to join a VIP room? And then once you join, if you want the address to a victim's house, if you want to request a specific type of torture, you'd have to pay another fee for that. I'm still trying to figure out how does somebody have the audacity to even want to have the reputation of being involved in some shit like this? You know, like, I know there's a bunch of pockets in the world and pockets of just things on the internet but it's like dog this is fucking nasty this is nasty this is fucking disgusting and niggas you proud of having this type of this type of reputation cuz that's disgusting but god Fuck. god he's not in it for the money he would take your request only if he thought it was sick enough, and he just was known to have a tighter grip on his, quote, slaves. He would actually dox every single one of them in the chat rooms. Oh all the victims you're talking about. All the victims. Nicole. They called them slaves, yeah. Dropped all the the police had been chasing the doctor and God God for months, but both of them are kind of like water. So every time they got close to finding them, they would scoop the water and they would just slip through their finger cracks. Mm. And it's not like they can just ask the chat rooms who they are. Why are you guys doing this? The police were able to get a link into some of these chat rooms, but they were undercover. If they start asking around for people's names, addresses, victim information, clues on who the doctor or God God is, they're going to be outed as cops. Mm -hmm. The chat room would then self-destruct. It would get bombed, a.k.a. they would just delete the chat room and all of its evidence and start a new one without the undercover police. Mm. So all they can do really is just sit there and watch. After a new video was sent, the chat room would have nonstop activity of people commenting things like, it looks delicious. Ew. Her face isn't my type, though. I want to see her lick the toilet. Make her get down on her knees and cry. Oh they would beg the creator of the chat room, the doctor, please, just send her address. We just want to know where she is. I kind of wonder how Stephanie feels about all these, like, stories she's saying. Like, this has to take a toll on you, you know? Like, just researching and doing all this stuff. This has to, this this has to, no? Because what's the fun if we can't go R word her? We promise we'll film it. Oh, God. The police would have no way of finding out who these people were, the creators or the watchers. They're actively planning a crime and the police could do nothing but just watch. One video uploaded into the chat depicted a woman being dragged into a motel room. Mm. And that address to that motel room was leaked in a separate VIP chat room that the police were not privy to. So they couldn't get the address. And one by one, this is being live streamed, they saw strangers, men from the chat rooms coming into the motel room and essaying her together. Mm. My God. We don't know the exact number of people, but it was a lot. All of it was live streamed and uploaded into the rooms. The police knew that the victim from the motel room died soon after. She had been pushed to a very scary place mentally. The news of her death started Rest spreading peace, on the girl. chat rooms and the watchers were responding. Wait, the motel girl really died? That's so sad. Why don't we go to her funeral and relieve ourselves on her picture one last time? It'll be like our last gift to her. It's Damn. like, it's like, do, Damn it. It's like, are y'all like, how do you, uh, how... Uh, Y'all, I mean, I wouldn't imagine anybody who would be so disrespectful to a person like that to even be somewhat remotely respectful to anybody's dead body or just respect the dead. You know, that that's on me for thinking somebody has any sort of an, any ounce of humanity. Like, I don't. Humans are fucking disgusting. If she knew that she was going to go out, she should have at least put on one big last show for us. Bro, shut up. She should have given us her body before she died, frowny face. The officers slammed their phones down on the table because they can't keep reading stuff like this. They got to do something about it. They have to find the victims. They have to find the others before they die. Mm -hmm. There's at least five victims in each chat room. And if the police were correct about their suspicions, the doctor, the creator of this chat room, had at least 70 to 80 chat rooms Nigga. hundreds of victims that they need to hunt down to protect you are a sick fuck bro. 
you are a sick fuck. Like, cuz. Go through oh all the videos God. and see if we can find anything. We need all the clues that we can get. The videos are all we have. Mm. They're looking for any identifying features. Freckles, moles, school uniforms, photos in the background, writing somewhere, a name, anything. They need to get to the victims before the doctor does. Mm-hmm. They cannot sit there and watch another video of a new victim being forced to carve the word slave into her body or girls being forced to film themselves defecating in a toilet and then eating out of the toilet bowl like a dog or victims being forced to sneak into men's public restrooms and film themselves licking the urinal or even victims who are forced to purchase live caterpillars from the store and film themselves placing them inside while they're still alive. So far, the youngest victim that they found was 12. 12 years old. But there were reports that they could be even younger. The much fuck? younger. The police were able to track down the next person that they wanted to talk to. Someone that could provide even deeper insight into the inner workings of the rooms. So about a dozen officers, they show up to speak with that person. But they need to handle this as sensitively as possible. I mean, they don't want to scare them. So they wait and they wait until the perfect moment to approach arises. And for a while, they're just watching. They're just surveilling. And it's such an oddly innocent sight in comparison to all the videos that they've been analyzing the past few months. Mm -hmm. It feels almost peaceful, serene in a way. No. The father smiling at his son. See, you're getting it. And the son is nervously shouting at his dad like, wait, don't let go. It's the picture of familial bliss, father and son. But they were watching the creator of the doctor's rooms. They were watching the doctor. He was right there in front of them, learning how to ride a bike. What? And he was much younger than they thought. Huh? Wait. That's that motherfucker that was in the picture? This is why, you know what, cuz, I don't... Mm. That is the devil spawn right there, what the hell? Bobby I'd be mad as hell, what the We would fuck? like to thank today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support NAMI Network, whose mission is to combat human trafficking. NAMI has an impressive international reach with a heavy presence in Asia. They help provide life-changing opportunities for survivors of trafficking by providing workforce and life skills for the women that they serve. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team of dedicated researchers and translators. We would also like to thank our listeners for your continued support as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates of these causes. Now, as always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. This is part two of our previous episode, which will be linked below. Mm -hmm. In the first part, we focused mainly on the discovery of the doctor's rooms on Telegram and the doctor and the cat and mouse games between the doctor and the producers of major news networks in South Korea. We also went over the doctor's signatures. So that's what he did. See, this is... This is what's going to piss me off. If I if we find out that this nigga is not going to do no time cuz he's young, I might actually just like flip my shit cuz there cuz like there should be like exceptions, no? Or we just we just stick to the law wholeheartedly all across the board. Like there's no injustices according to the law like y'all don't y'all don't change the law a little bit. Because there's no fucking way. Of course, something in my mind is telling me that's probably what's going to happen. But, like, I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that. But I'm starting to probably believe that that might happen. That's... Ew, son, what the fuck? ...to his victims, his methods of torture and how he just kept them physically and psychologically imprisoned. Mm. I mean, there is a heavy, heavy content warning for part one and part two. Part two also involves the topic of trafficking, essay, and torture of our most vulnerable population. The crimes are incredibly graphic. Mm. So if you feel like this case is going to be a bit too much, go take care of yourself. We will see you in the next one. Victims' names have been altered to protect their anonymity, and some testimonies have been condensed or combined for clarity. And one additional note, we will be using the word slave frequently in this episode. It's not that I think that they are being portrayed as slaves. That's what they were called in the chat rooms. That's what they were forced to call themselves during their torture videos. I was trying to think of ways to soften the word because I know it's, especially in the U.S., it's such a strong word with heavy connotations. 
but it felt wrong to soften a word that is such a big part of this case. Mm -hmm. Victims were forced to write and then later carve that word into their bodies with a knife and to use any other word than that for the sole purpose of making it easier for us to sleep at night, it feels like we're downplaying the extent of evil in this case. Mm. So to clarify, this is not a personal term that I've coined to describe the victims in this situation. It is what they were called in the chat rooms by the perpetrators, by the watchers, and it is the word that they were forced to call themselves. So with that do. being said, let's get into it. Mm. The average pen is six inches long, okay. and there's one sitting right in front of 24-year-old Cho Jubin in the interrogation room. Uh -huh. We're just going to call him Cho. Cho. He had been arrested while he's learning how to ride a bike from his dad, and the police are now accusing him of being the doctor. The doctor of the Telegram chat rooms. He's like, I'm not the doctor. It's not me. I mean, Whoa, what if the, do oh, what if the doctor did a okey-doke? And probably sent, oh no, probably added to this cat and mouse game. Oh, fuck no. This is just so unjust. I was just a member of the doctor's rooms. I didn't even know that it was like torture. I thought the girls were into uh, it. Hell I'm no. not the doctor. Hell no. Then why do you have $100,000 of cash in your room? Oh, hell no. <laughs> That's, that has nothing to do with any of this. Please, I'm not the doctor. They were not listening to him. The police weren't even entertaining the idea that they might have the wrong guy. <laughs> he keeps pleading. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Can I at least use the restroom? No, fuck no. So as Cho gets up, in one swift motion, he pockets the pen on the table and gets escorted to the police he restroom. Gonna, he gonna kill himself. The average pen is six inches long. Oh my God. The average throat is only five inches. I knew it. He walks into the empty police I restroom knew it. and he turns on the water faucet. He's gripping the sides of the sink and he's staring into the mirror. If they're not gonna believe him, he's gotta do something drastic to get mm. them to see the truth. And bam, he slams his head on the edge of the bathroom sink. Then he pulls back again, his head is throbbing, but he goes again and bam, he slams his head on the sink. He can hear the officers running towards the restroom, so he takes one last breath, grabs the pen from his pocket, just, and shoves it into his throat. Just kills he was going to die by swallowing this pen. He's going to swallow it. Because even he knew, prison is no place for doctors. Exactly. There's an insult in South Korea called Ibechung. Well, I guess the translation oh, would be kind of like Ibe bug. Ibe is used to describe someone who has no future and is just a pest to society. Mm. But the word mm. originates from people who use the website Ibe Storehouse. It's essentially like 4chan, where oh, there are God. different categories for a person to post in. So pretty much like how they describe incels over here or just incels in general. But it's Ibe is specifically dominated by incels. Oh. It's considered the 55th most visited website in South Korea with 17 million visits a month. 55th. You say 55th? God yeah. damn. What's now, it's not hard to visit. It's just on the internet. It's not on the dark web. You don't need a password to get in. But once you're in, you feel like the FBI is watching you. Oh, so shit. all of the ads on the website, very aggressive cartoon style explicit materials. And even just the post on there, I feel like I'm on a watch list just by spending a full day on there. I mean, I think the best way to throw you into the eBay world is to just to break down some of the theories and terms that they use. Okay. One of the biggest ideas on eBay storehouse is the dishwasher theory. The dishwashing theory was literally made by eBay bugs to describe the idea of marrying sluts. They think that women who have had more than, I don't know, two partners before getting married are considered dirty dishes. And the men who eventually marry them are dishwashers. That's their job. Mm. I'm trying to figure out why are some people so fucking stupid? Like, I don't understand why it's such a bad thing if a girl has a lot of sex or she does a lot of fucking. Because it's like, you will never know anyway. You won't know unless you're in her bedroom. Like, you won't know. There's literally no way for you to know. All you have to do is take her word for it. Like, that's literally all you have to do. But at the end of the day, it's like none of your business. You know what I'm saying? Like, their past really has nothing to do with you. Like, if you, like, what? Well, I don't, I just can't, bro, what the fuck? I don't, oh, my God. So, these men are beta males. I mean, you don't even get to eat oh, Why do you meal, use that say. word? Yeah. So, on this dish, there used to be a five-star filet mignon steak. Another man ate it and then left half of it. Then another man came by, ate the rest of it, and now you're just stuck with filet mignon juices Nigga, on a dirty what? dish, and that's who you've married, and all day you're going to spend cleaning up. Bro, wait till you realize that, bro, 
<clears throat> Bro, these hoes and sluts that you diminish and demean, they're actually good people. They have a lot of experience. They have a lot of stories. They can give insight. Like they like they're not they're not trash to be thrown away. Well, nobody's trash to be thrown away except for people who do this just doctor shit like this. But it's like why like get over yourself, bro. Like really. Like like get like get the fuck over yourself. This shit is this shit is weird. And it's not gonna it's not gonna help you in life anyway. Like hate niggas like this bro i think it's annoying as shit that dirty dish you're gonna be left supporting the wife who doesn't even have anything to offer Bur other than her dirty bowl people on the forum will just comment dishwashing in threads when they think that there is a man that's marrying a dirty dish nigga what yeah and they start making fun of the both of them because the woman is a manipulative parasite that has had her fun and now wants to settle down. And the man is an idiot who got the short end of the stick. Is it like very similar to American incels? incels. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, you tell me. I don't know if it's worse or less extreme, but one post on the website is titled, Currently, Korean women are in a state of mental breakdowns. The post shows a chart where single Korean women are much more likely to have mental disorders compared to married men, married women, and even single men. Bro, what? We don't know if this graph is even accurate, okay? Nigga, what? It's just like you could make it in Excel. The post reads, due to the dating and marriage rate, Korean men have abandoned Korean women. Statistically, I don't think that's true. Uh -huh. If women don't get love and attention from a man, they become mentally ill. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the article? What the fuck? Yeah, this is like a post that they wrote oh, onto God. the forum. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot, but the comments under this thread get even crazier. It's a sick. lot to unpack. They read, if you're over 30 and you're a female, you're basically a manufacturing factory that produces deformed babies. If you still have maybe... Bro, that's not cool, cuz. That's not cool. That's not cool, bro. Like, that's not cool. Like, I don't understand, like, what do, what do you gain from this type of type of like speaking like why would you say that you obviously don't know how women work and the body works like what the fuck are you talking about uh, y'all is losers cuz face body long hair and a big p-u-s-s-y a few men will still kind of line up a I big think, pussy for a 30 year old woman another post is just titled why you shouldn't marry a used P-U-S-S-Y. A used pussy. Yeah, it reads, the average age of marriage for women in Korea is 30, and that means they typically have seven relationships before they get married. If we estimate that she has intimate relations with each of those seven men 100 times, that means she's likely had intimate relations 700 times before meeting you. Now, if we count the number of pumps, Nigga. singular pumps. Bro, get off. Get <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. There's no way you're... There's no way you're calculating pumps. There's no way you're calculating thrusts. Cause there's no way it's this bad. Her private area will take over the course of her relationship. We can say it's 500 thrust in what? each act. It'll total up to 350,000 times that she's had insertion. You niggas suck. Why, why are they doing that? Because of that. I think that we can no longer consider this a female private part, but basically a black hole that just sucks everything in. What? <laughs> That's what they're saying. Bro, like what They're the... trying to bring up like a big, big number. Yeah, they're, they're like, doing... Oh my God, look at this number, guys. I don't know what kind of math they're doing. It's right? math. math. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what the fuck? If you think about it, tens of thousands of little male fluids are already sitting in your bride's privates, and it's pretty much a dried up water reservoir. The vagina cleans itself. I don't, I don't think it just sits there and stews. What? Ew, yo. I mean, imagine your baby coming out of that. What? Do you feel like your life is going to even improve by seeing used privates like that? Bro. Yeah, because your One life's going to person just commented a gif of an adult entertainer's face while she's in the middle of her performance. Oh, and God. And in response to that, someone comments, I hate big pie pepperoni chest so much. They're talking about the part of the chest. Nipples? Another reads, I'm starting to believe the only hope for men is to declare civil war against women and turn them all into war brides. 
Another comment says, you know, I think the idea that women can only date one man for the rest of their life is kind of ridiculous and unreasonable. Like the concept doesn't make sense. I say we all just see women's bodies and P-U-S-S-Ys as public property and we can all use them together and we can all make sure that we keep them clean. How does it get They even this? have like their own dictionary. There's something called kimchi girl. And it means a, who's always angry and serious. And then on the other end of that spectrum, they have the Amulang girl. And Amulang, which is basically a very dumb way of saying, I don't know. How? And it's a dumb girl who does nothing but always cries to get out of problems. And so How does it get this bad? Like, how does it get this bad? How are you this much of a shitty person that it gets this bad? How much smoothening of your brain and the stuff that you consume makes you get this disgusting situations and leave messes for everybody else but then but then the same people that be talking like this be in these chat rooms pleasuring themselves to these same people so in turn you're not disgusted by this you can't be right that, that's how that works right I mean, as a guy, I wouldn't get excited over some shit that I find de totally disgusting. Right? The fuck? Yeah. Many of these terms and comments would make their way over to the Telegram chat rooms. Mm. eBay storehouse was like a gateway drug to the nth rooms and the wow. doctor's rooms. A few clicks after finding the right people on eBay and you're let in on the internet's biggest secret, hiding in plain sight. Easy access, CP, and torture all on the publicly available Telegram, not even the dark web. A few easy clicks and you'll be at the center of the doctor's room. At 3 a.m. in Seoul, there is a large splash near the Yongdong Bridge. That, 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 um, that, that emotion that she just exuded right after she just said that. I feel you. This shit is disgusting. Cause an office worker in his forties was found dead, floating in the Han River. What? This would be the sixth person in the past few days to be found dead in Seoul. All self exits, and all six of them are connected to one another. So when the news breaks out that another body is found, netizens start reacting, and they're writing online. Probably the best thing he's ever done in his life. He probably one in down, down at two hundred and fifty thousand more to go. Shit. Why do something so embarrassing and make your own death something to be laughed at? She, this is hey. not the normal reaction netizens have to someone jumping into the Han River in the middle of the night. Hey, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes some, some netizens really be on timing. And I respect it. Sometimes some netizens be kind of tripping. But when it comes to stuff like this, I be having faith in the netizens to, 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 to curse these nasty fucks up out of here. Get these niggas the fuck up out of here. Even if I'm somebody who doesn't like to speak on death like, in a malicious way... If your life and what you're known for is doing some wild shit like this, nigga, I'm turning a blind eye to all these words that these netizens are saying. These netizens will, will they do not hold back. That's some. That's what I can respect. I can respect that. Even if I disagree sometimes, I can respect that they will not hold back. But netizens do not feel an ounce of sadness for this man because he had left behind a note that read, I deposited money into the doctor's rooms. Oh. I didn't know it was going to become so big. Oh. He had been a purchaser and watcher. Oh, of hell no. And all six of them that had recently died were connected because all six of them were being investigated for being buyers. Gotta go. But I thought the whole thing was anonymous, right? Boy, you, dumb, boy, boy, you dumb as hell, boy. Ain't nothing anonymous, boy. You stupid. Ain't nothing anonymous and nothing gets deleted off the internet. Stupid. Can't catch anyone. The creator, the watcher, the purchaser. I mean, they're all shielded by a veil of anonymity. No. No. After news broke of the existence of these chat rooms, vigilante justices decided to take it upon themselves to infiltrate these chat rooms. Batman. They would gather as many usernames as possible. They would track them down one by one. They would use any clues from any messages that they wrote, their profile picture, any information on their pages. You'd be surprised at how people were tracked down, Oof. just in terms of identity searching. One chat room member briefly mentioned what they ate for lunch. 
and in a message long 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 time ago and there's like hundreds of people in this chat room right to just log down what everybody's saying mm -hmm. is crazy so yeah. in a message long time ago that same username mentioned being in school still mm. someone went and searched all the school menus in the city and started cross-referencing with what they ate for lunch with the school menus in the city they were able to find out which school they went to and from there they narrowed it down to who they thought that person was hey i'm not even gonna hold you cuz even though there's people who, who need to touch grass and are on some freaky shit, there's also a flip side to it. There's people who need to touch grass, but they on some vigilante shit. I can get with that. That's why I see. Oh, my gosh. Get these freaky fucks out of here, bro. Yes. Hell yes. Yes. Would I do it? Fuck no. But hearing this, yes. Get that nigga school lunch and get him out of here. You better not be watching shit either, though. You know what I'm saying? I have a feeling you, you're probably in this, too, because you probably had to put money in there. Shit. Okay, let's keep going. I, mm. So, obviously, <clears throat> catching God, God, and the doctor are different stories. But through these types of methods, vigilante justices were trying to track down the viewers of the videos. Mm. There was a website that started trending in South Korea called Digital Prison. Oh. It was leaking usernames, full government names of watchers that were on the doctor's rooms on Telegram and the nth rooms. Oh, people were cross-referencing the massive list of names with people in their personal lives. Mm -hmm. Wives were discovering their husbands were on there. Kids are finding out that their dads are on there. Bro, it's like that Ashley Madison leak. Holy shit. Even eight teachers were exposed to be buyers of CP. Oh, so some hackers. They're not even hackers. Oh. They're like, you and me, we just get a link into one of the rooms and we start making an Excel spreadsheet of every username Holy and all the clues shit. that we can gather. They're okay. not hacking anything. Oh, okay. I dropped my brush. In response to the website Digital Prison, ah. people were jumping into the Han River. Oh. They were fleeing the country and Naver, nah, the don't Google run away. Korea, had new trending searches. Oh. How to delete Telegram. Telegram, Enthrum case, human feces, Enthrum, Telegram, Enthrum, delete. Uh -huh. Digital analysts didn't even have a second after all of this that their phone lines were not going off. Hello, this is Sam of IT. I will die if this gets exposed. Well, guess what? You're out of here. You need to help me delete all this stuff. On Hell no. He was talking about the videos from Telegram. Mm. He had downloaded torture CP videos, and he didn't want any of that to be showing. It's getting out. And he said he needed the analyst to wipe everything, and he ranted to them. I mean, I'm just wondering, is going on Enthroom such a heinous crime that I should be shunned from society? Yes. I yes. Actually, yes. For sure. For shit show. Yes. I just did it out of curiosity with my friends. And all I did really was just like watch one video. Well, one video. You're, no, you're the done. The digital analyst would later say, I didn't really know what to do. I usually help victims wipe their information and details off the internet. I've never had so many perpetrators reaching out to me, asking me for help. Mm. Is he not supposed to report these people? I think he was. Mm. Now, a lot of digital analysts in the city were overwhelmed with requests for services because there were an estimated 260,000 buyers of the nth room and doctor's rooms. The public wanted all 260,000 names released. In part one, we went over the creation of the doctor's room Shit. on Telegram and all of the other smaller chat rooms, the marketplaces for people to join on Telegram where they can choose between categories of torture and CP that they want to see, mm. uh, even choose the age groups of CP that they'd like. Mm. Then they're guided into the appropriate Telegram rooms that have those things. Whoever was able to like, whoever, whoever was able to like get these pictures to blur them out, my heart goes out to you. I hope you ain't on no freaky fuck shit because... Yo, this is this is nuts. Like, there's people out there who have to like see this shit to blur it out. Like, it's so many different layers that's just nuts. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's. Ugh. I mean, we went over that, ugh. but I think a huge part of this case is how the hell is this on Telegram? Yeah. Telegram like, uh, is the sixth most <clears throat> downloaded app in the world, and all of the stuff in the nth rooms and the doctors' rooms. I mean, it feels like it belongs on the dark web, but no. It's just like six, seven clicks away from Google to get there. And I just want to 
set a quick disclaimer real quick. Telegram is not inherently a bad app. And the majority of people using Telegram are not trying to use it for nefarious activities. So for example, Ukrainians are said to increasingly rely on Telegram for accurate news and information from on the ground journalists mm. who provide real time updates, but also warnings for people to flee to safety. So I don't want to make it appear as if I'm like demonizing Telegram or saying Telegram shouldn't exist. Mm, I think Telegram okay. is one of those tricky applications because when it's used for good, it's used for a lot of good. But if it's used it for provides bad. secure channels of conversation that can be life changing or even life saving in times of war. Mm -hmm. But because of the private and somewhat anonymous features Telegram utilizes, it creates this almost unintentional breeding ground for criminal activity. Mm -hmm. I see what there you are mean. four features that make Telegram a solid choice for people who don't want to be tracked, listened to, or watched. First, Telegram lets you create an account rather easily. You do need a phone number to sign up, but once you create your account, you can unlink your phone number. But if you really don't want to be traced, there are a lot of services that will sell you a phone number that's not linked to you for the sole purpose of creating a Telegram account anonymously. Telegram does not require an email or a verification email. It's very simple to set up. That's and they have a feature the called fuck? secret chats. It makes it so that Telegram does not save any chat history. If you message someone. Why do I feel like all that is capped though? Like, cause don't people, creators of the app and developers of the app have to protect their own ass? Like this shit can't, this shit doesn't delete. I have it so, I find it so hard to, to, to believe like that this shit is just gone. No, this shit can't just be gone. It has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. And you delete that message off your telegram and the receiver of that message that you're talking to deletes that message off of their telegram. It's gone for good. It's not stored or backed up on any of the telegram servers. Bro, what? It's like that conversation never happened. What? But even if you haven't deleted the chat from your phone because it's not stored on telegram servers, even if the FBI for example, requested Telegram to release those messages. They don't have them to begin with. They don't have anything to give. That's crazy. Not that they would even cooperate. Telegram like never cooperates with the FBI. Mm. Telegram is basically unmoderated on a central level as well. Hmm. So on YouTube, obviously there's moderation in the fact that we can't upload certain things. Yeah. Same with Instagram, TikTok, all those platforms. Uh -huh. Telegram, there's no central moderation. Really? So you can post whatever the hell you want. Holy yeah. fuck. I mean, you could get arrested for it in other ways, but Telegram is not going to take it down. Holy They're fuck. They're not going to censor you. They're not going to say, oh, this is too much for our platform. What the hell? Mm, interesting. Yeah. That's and regardless of that, Telegram hardly ever works with government agencies to hand over information on users. They've got a crazy strong privacy policy. Oh. So, for example, the FBI can subpoena Apple to hand over some message content from iMessages. So if they have a target, they could possibly render 25 days of iMessage lookups from the target number mm -hmm. they could render backups of a target device if the target device uses iCloud backup they could acquire all the content from the iCloud backup as well as iMessage backups mm. basically a lot of messages can be seen like you yeah. should function at any given moment using iMessage that the FBI could very likely see your text messages mm -hmm. but with telegram they do not release any message content. They provide no contact information, even in active criminal investigations. They will only provide an IP address and a phone number in confirmed terrorist investigations. Oh, okay. That's it. This is this don't count as terrorism? Founder stated, Telegram will stand for freedom and privacy. Privacy is not for sale and human rights should not be compromised. Hey, question. Um, so human rights shouldn't be compromised, but doesn't that cancel out if human rights are violated? Shouldn't that cancel out? Like, if the human rights of a person who's posting this nasty shit violates the human rights of the person in the video that's getting posted, shouldn't that cancel out? But instead of confirmed terrorism, so in that case human rights are just out the window is that is that am i following correctly there is also a self-destruct feature you know how in snapchat when someone sees something it disappears you, can just, you could do that on telegram just but you can do it on a large scale and another thing with telegram is you can host massive chat rooms chat rooms with over two hundred thousand people why the fuck would you and they let you share very large files you could upload fuck? videos onto these chat rooms. Telegram, if used for the wrong purposes, 
can turn into Gotham. Mm -hmm. It can turn into a digital lawless land where you can distribute criminal material at a large scale very quickly. And before the doctor's rooms, there was God God and the Nth rooms on Telegram. The Nth rooms were the original torture CP slavery forums oh that would go on to inspire the rooms like the doctor's rooms to be made. But just like the doctor, Nth room did not just consist of one telegram chat room. The name Nth rooms is used to describe a collection of rooms created by God God. And in the beginning, there were only eight rooms. But with more demand, with more supply, with new victims, more chat rooms would pop up. Another Nth room, then two, then four, then 16. The Nth rooms were like opening a door into this long spiral staircase into the depths of hell and you start walking down the staircase just spiraling into the void and you start opening these doors and every door that you open there's new people new girls new victims that are forced to perform for a camera and then when you think that you've gotten to the bottom that it cannot possibly get darker that there's not another level this is fucking crazy dude because like the fact that he's threatening to release everything if one person escapes just adds a whole level of like Bro, you're you're they're going to make you feel like you're responsible for everybody else's shit too. As if like you shouldn't have the ability to get the fuck up out of there. You know, like so there, he's just like just piling on potential guilt that could be put on you. That is that is disgusting. God, what the fuck? The spiral staircase winds even more and a new door appears and then mm. another and then another. Mm. In math, the letter N can represent a sequence of numbers that continues into infinity. Oh. So eventually the term Nth room becomes an umbrella term for any online chat room with explicit torture content. It almost fuck? becomes like the Kleenex effect. Yeah. You know, it's like, can you the pass Kleenex? me the Kleenex? Uh, Even if coming. you don't have the brand Kleenex next to you, you would pass me a tissue. Uh -huh. So the Nth rooms, they became synonymous with oh. CP. Oh, fuck. Can you give me a link to the Nth Rooms? It's basically, can you give me a link to an illegal Telegram chat oh, room? Oh, fuck. And because it's the Nth Rooms, <clears throat> you never knew when a new one was going to pop up. It was late into the evening when Yuna gets a notification on her phone. She has been invited to a chat room on Telegram, and she thought it was kind of odd, but she clicked the link and a video starts instantly playing. And all these messages start coming in. Ding, ding. The messages are flooding the chat. She's being spammed with screenshots from the video, comments, Yo! even GIFs that are playing on a loop. Yuna quickly mutes her phone in case her family can hear from the living room. But the screen keeps lighting up with more notifications. What the fuck? She's staring at the phone and it's a video of herself. And all she can hear very lightly in the background are her own screams. She's staring at a video from one of the worst nights of her life. Yo. A few weeks ago, she had been attacked in a grocery store parking lot. A man had dragged her to a dark corner where nobody could see or hear her and essayed her while he filmed the whole thing. That video was somehow now in a chat room on Telegram filled with hundreds of people reacting and... Re For what the fuck? I can't, bro. Imagine you just minding your business, doing nothing, and it. Responding to it. <clears throat> Her heart starts racing. Her stomach is dropping. Like, who, who are these people? The How do they fuck? even get this video? Two new messages are sent into the chat rooms. The first is a picture of her front door. Oh, the second, her full home address. And then a third message appears. You know, right? Go to the black van in the alleyway outside your house, or we release this video to the public. Yuna went. Mm. Because her body went into autopilot mode, I mean, to protect her from what's about to happen. Fuck. She snuck out because I think a lot of social context is needed. I think even in the U.S., when revenge explicit videos are posted, it ruins your life. Mm -hmm. It ruins everything. But in Korea, it's a little bit worse. It's a little bit more conservative over there. I mean, this is going to affect job opportunity. You're not going to be seen as a victim. Mm. You know when outside, it's pitch black. And in the alleyway, she does not recognize the man's face That's in front of the fucked. black van. But he recognized her. He grabbed her by the arms, shoved her inside the van. Then he climbed in the back. He pulled out his phone, pointed it at Yuna. Say hi to the camera. I don't even want to reenact this shit. to cover her face from the camera, but the guy in the back seat handed the phone to a second man. He was sitting in the driver's seat, and he kept the camera pointed directly at her. The man in the back takes off his coat, and he proceeds to R-word her as the driver is filming the whole thing. Oh, my she God. She thought that he was live streaming because he kept, he kept laughing at the comments 
or maybe he was laughing at her. We don't know. <sighs> and throughout the assault, the driver demanded, what are you? Answer me. What are you? And she'd be forced to say, I'm God, God's slave. When they were done, they threw her out of the van and they sped off. And that new video was now circulating in the chat rooms. Yuna sat in her room while her phone buzzed on the table. I mean, everybody is commenting on this video, what they liked, what they didn't like, what they wanted next time. Humiliate her. I want to see her lick a toilet. We should have done more guys, like 20 at once. Ah, I want to R word her too. Mm. But Yuna could not leave the chat room. She had to stay because she knows that soon enough, God God is going to send another order for her. Whoever God God is, she doesn't even know God God, but she knows people like God God and they never stop. And she knew that if she didn't do what they wanted, if she didn't comply, he would release these videos. Even though she's a victim in both videos, in this society, it would ruin her life. But what Yuna didn't know at that point was God God had planned this for her since the very beginning. Mm. He had seen Yuna's social media profile and he made up in his mind that he wanted her as a slave. What so the he fuck? ordered her to be attacked and recorded. The random attack in the grocery store, the filming of the essay, it was all part of God God's plan. What the fuck? They were all planned by God God. He had personally hand-selected her to be his victim. And she also didn't know at this point that she was not his only victim. $675 is a lot of money, I think. But it's also not a lot of money. It's I mean, it, it is and it's not. It's a round trip flight from New York City to LA for one person during a very busy season. $600 is a lot of fucking money, cuz. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't care how much money I had. $600 something dollars for one little thing. That's two zeros. That shit look weird as hell coming out of my account. What the fuck? It's also barely half of the US's average rent per month, which is around $1,400. That's the but that is how much God God made from running the Anthrums collectively. One of the biggest, largest marketplaces for CP and torture videos on Telegram. He made six hundred and seventy five dollars, period. How long was it? Like over a year. Huh. In total. There were originally eight Anthrums, the originals. So God God and an accomplice of his, they would advertise these eight rooms on Twitter. And at the start, they really only had a few people coming in, only a few moderators, a few victims, and a few anonymous guys that wanted access. Tickets would start at less than $8 each what? per chat room. Cheaper $8. than a movie ticket. What cheaper than movie theater popcorn. But that's the point. God God never really cared about the money. He was here mainly for the torture, for the creation of these videos. He was the creator of it all. So while other chat rooms, they had straight to the point welcoming messages like, let's rip. If you entered the end rooms, you would have kind of a disclaimer of sorts. God God would write, these slaves didn't follow instructions and escaped. So you may do with them as you please. And I assure you, I do not leak videos of slaves who comply with all their given orders. Signed, God God. You're a liar. It was weird. It's almost like... He's saying that they wronged him in this game and now they need to be punished. That's why he's doing this. It's all a game to him. So let the games begin. <clears throat> Most of God God's videos were about three minutes long. And in just one hour, 50 to 60 photos or videos of girls could be sent into the chat rooms. That's a lot. I mean, the list of acts that they would be forced to perform was viciously long. They were in almost every single video on mm. all fours they were forced to bark like a dog sneak into men's restrooms and film themselves doing things to themselves not in the stall but like in the middle hoping that no one's going to come in in black sharpie they'd have to write on themselves slave bitch personal toilet personal body parts a trademark of god god's abuses that the doctor would later adopt so this is something that he learned from god god it's not even his when god god got bored of having all those words on the victims, he would have them carve slave into their skin with knives. Again, Fun. something that the doctor learned from him. That was the majority of the videos. Every week, you would see the torture escalate to become more humiliating, more violent. It went from writing God, God, slave on their bodies to carving it and then piercing their skin with needles, mm. including their chest. Mm. For God, God, he'd started with just very specific part of a woman's chest to be pierced. 
And to do that at home is very painful. To do that to yourself is very painful. But it is something that is done for some people who like it as like a stylistic choice. But of course, these girls, they didn't have a choice. They're victims in this. They were being forced. Mm -hmm. But he felt like that wasn't enough. So he wanted them to take a sewing needle and a thread and pierce it through their breast tissue and flesh oh, and then pull it out the other the end. Fuck? Ah. These orders would be sent to multiple oh. middle and high schoolers. Oh, my God. He'd have them grab their sewing kits and pick the largest needle, thread it with string, and grab a chunk of their flesh and just string through. <sighs> like, he just wanted to see... Can they kill this dude? Like, can he, like, like... I want to check something. He's still alive? Cuz... No fucking way. You mean to tell me that this nigga was sentenced to 34 years in prison? Nah, bro. Nah. Nah. What the fuck? Yeah. While they would say, I'm God, God's slave, and their hands would be shaking. I mean, they would plunge it into their flesh and it wasn't this is literally like you were you were dead ass bro you were literally causing generational trauma you are a terrorist you 34 years for being a terrorist are you kidding me this just like a prick or a flu shot they would have to thread the needle in and out of their flesh as if they're giving themselves stitches for a wound that doesn't even exist they're creating a wound and people who have gotten sutures without numbing they say that even the needle when it goes into your skin it feels like you're slicing your skin away with a knife some sources say that god got demanded that they used a light colored thread so that he could see that they went deep enough so much so that the thread would turn deep red Sometimes after tunneling through the flesh, the needle would come out on the other end and then the red thread would follow and he would force them to take off the needle. Mm. The thread is still in their body. Bro, and fuck. And he would get them to get the two sides of the thread, tie it to a heavy object and let it just slowly. Oh my God. I just can't. Oh my God, dude. Like, come on. Cause like. I know what it feels like to get pricked by a sewing needle. Imagine all... I'm so sorry to y'all. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Stretch their skin. And it would be excruciatingly painful. He called it the skin stretching torture. So it's like if you grabbed a piece of your belly and then threaded a needle through it. And then tie... Yeah. Full fuck. I mean... I mean, the best way I could describe it is if you were to get a belly button piercing and then hang something heavy right off of it. Mm. At the height of the end rooms, God God had personally Ugh. distributed 3,762 videos. This is not including the videos shared by other users. To God God, this was not a business or a day job or even a way to make money. It was his hobby. And if nobody wanted to play with him, he would make them play. God God would later say himself that he started the end rooms so he could relieve his stress. And I guess viewers could tell that he's not here for the money. Because during the peak of the end rooms, they were the gold standard in the Telegram chat room world. Watchers could be in every other chat room that was filled with hundreds of heinous videos and they would still want to get a link into the end rooms. Mm -hmm. God God was to these depraved people a legend. And that's when God God decides, I'm going to retire. I'm going to disappear at the height of the I'm entrance. going to retire. Nobody knew why. He contacted one of his victims out of the blue and said, all of my actions were part of a game. I'm not trying to ask for forgiveness or asking you to not report it to the police. I don't care. I'm just contacting you to let you know that all the behaviors that you engaged in were just part of a fun game for me. People that I posted on the end room was because they ran away from the game and I had to give them a punishment, you know? No, After I don't allegedly know. ordering a girl to slice off her breast or that part of the breast. Yeah. God, God left one last message for her before he vanished. And he told the victim, well, that was fun, but I have to go now. I have to go play Maple Story, which is notoriously a game that younger people play. He would kind of make it seem like he's in high school and nobody knew if it was true. He would log off for months. He handed control to the nth rooms over to a man called the Watchman and then he vanished. Well, he's 28, so 
by, by, by this video, he's 28 years old. So that nigga's not no fucking child. God God was gone. For now. Once you reach your genetic height, there really is only one way to grow taller. You gotta break your legs. Leg lengthening surgery is they're either gonna break your calf bones or break your thigh bones. You pay doctors $100,000 if it's purely cosmetic, they'll knock you out and they'll, with a bone saw, they'll break your bones in half. This is actually, cr like, this is actually crazy because there's like a bunch of stories of people getting like leg surgery. And I remember when I was a child watching South Park and Kyle got like leg surgery and then he became black and then his like knees exploded. Like I remember like I remember that and I'm just thinking like, dog, what the hell is going on? Like like life is really turning into like a custom video game. Like this is actually crazy. This is actually very insane. I mm. lean like a dismemberment. It takes a lot of energy for them to break it in half, by the way. The thigh bone, especially, is the strongest bone in the entire body. Well, one of the strongest bones. It can withstand two grand pianos stacked on top of it. And it also makes it one of the most excruciating injuries out there. I bet. One man said, you would choose death over bone fracture in your thighs. The pain fries your nervous system. You feel like you have two knees in one leg. I mean, it's so painful, huh? but it gets worse. What? After they break your legs, ah! you get a thick metal mechanical rod drilled into the center core of- God, I don't need to be that tall, bro. I'm sorry. My heart goes out to the people who want to get the surgery. You don't need to be that tall, gang. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Your leg bone running the length of your leg. Like those hot dog- like pigs in a blanket, do you know uh, what I'm talking about? It's like a hot dog and then it's wrapped in dough. And this is me, this is me talking with metal on my leg because I've just got a broken ankle. But the hot dog is the metal rod and the dough is your thigh bone. Ah. Uh, they drill it into your bone. Ah. Uh, oh. What the? Inside, inside. of your bone. Yeah. Metal area. They put a little yeah. thing. Wow. And Wait, that, what if your body that metal rod responds to an external remote. And every single day, you lay in the hospital bed, and the doctor will press a button on the remote, causing the metal rods to move apart from each other. To stretch. To stretch. Oh. It forces your two separated thigh bones to now rip away from one another in opposite directions once a day for three months. The How do you come up with shit like this? Goal is to create a small enough gap in between your leg bones that your body naturally wants to rebuild new bone over the gap. Now, once that's done, before it heals and hardens, you rip it apart even more, causing oh your body to build God. new bone every day for three months. With one surgery, you can gain up to two to three inches. But that's if and only if your bones actually fill the broken parts. Cause if two not, two inches. Cause a hundred thousand racks. I mean, a hundred thousand dollars. And me possibly not even be able to use my legs no more and rods in my thighs to grow two to three inches. When I could just wear shoe heighteners or learn to love my fuck. You know what? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Wow. Yeah. And if your bones don't fill the empty parts, you're just going to be left with like two knees and one leg. And you'll likely have to go through the surgery once more if you don't grow. Man, now, the healing that. time for a surgery like this is about a year. So during that time, you have to relearn how to walk, relearn how to drive, run. You can't work. But Cho, Cho Jubin, was never really one that cared about conventional work. As long as he could be a bit taller, he didn't care about anything. You really don't the care doctor? about shit, huh? The doctor. The doctor had leg oh, surgery? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had leg surgery. At 23 wow. years old, fresh out of the military, three inches taller, he wanted to be done with work. So for a while, he tried volunteering. And now that he's stuck inside, because after his leg surgery, he can't really do anything. He's got bad knees. The he fuck? finds another calling, an easier way to make money and pay off that $100,000 hospital bill. March 2019, Cho starts scribbling on his walls. This nigga, this nigga paid... This nigga all just started because he wanted to be taller and he ended up being the doctor. What type of what type of origin story is this? This origin story sucks. Dog. Somebody needs to break your knees, bro. Like what? 
lots of scribbles. Random variations of numbers, letters. I mean, it's illegible to everybody but himself. It's a Da Vinci and when code? Was perfected, when he looked back into his room and he's like, this is good, he would create a chat room on Telegram. Perhaps he was inspired by a surgery or something like that because he named it the doctor's room. Cho had been lurking on these Telegram chat rooms. Oh, that's why, that's why he calls himself the... Uh -huh. for a while now consuming content <clears throat> but now with god god the monopoly of the chat room's gone vanished mysteriously he sees an opening he feels like the keys to the kingdom are right for the taking and what's a kingdom without a god and who better to help the cp starved population the than the good old doctor a video a day keeps the doctor away so one of the very first lessons that the doctor learned after starting his enterprise was a bored customer is not a paying customer. Those were the rules that the doctor lived and died by. He did not want to wait to feel the watchers getting disinterested. He always knew when to keep upping the stakes, upping the fun. So one way he would do this is he would open up a new random chat room. They were so random. He would drop a brand new chat room link in all of his chat rooms, like 70 to 80 of them. And the watchers would scramble to join. And the first message in the chat would pop up. It's from the doctor. Ding. Let's play a game. Everyone tell me your dream video. The chat quickly fills up with twisted torture ideas, creative humiliation fantasies that these people have. And once they were done, they would start playing the game. It's called the Nunchi game, the social cue game. So the game involves counting from one to however many people are playing. You have to count in chronological order. So each person must say a number once, but what? they cannot say the same number at the same time as somebody else. So usually it's in person. You're in a circle with all of your friends. Let's say you have 30 friends. Now you're going to glance around and nobody's talking. Then you go one. And then you glance around and nobody's talking to you two. You blurt out the numbers, hoping that nobody says the same number at the same time as you. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you lose. You're eliminated. Uh -huh. You also lose if you're the last one to say a number. Okay. It's all about reading the room, which is kind of difficult to do when you're in a chat room. Right. So the doctor would have the watchers play the Nunchi game over and over again until they picked a winner and they would get a piece of content of their choosing. So if they wanted a quote slave to do a certain act of humiliation or if they wanted the address to go R word that slave, they would get that for free because they won the Nunchi game. The mm. doctor would spend a lot of time coming up with these fresh ideas for his paying customers. But there is also a downside to that. What? The problem with being such an ambitious business owner is that in the name of profits, sometimes you cut corners with safety. God God of the Nth Rooms was known for heavily vetting his users. The process of entering one of his chat rooms was lengthy. It's pricey. It's, it's wild. It's like a four-step authentication process. First, you have to provide a picture of your male body part. That's what he calls it, right? And with your username written next to it. Then you have to provide your government-issued ID and your phone number. Then the third step is the most important step for God God. You have to provide your own piece of content. In order to see the library of videos that God God has, you have to contribute to the library of videos. God God encouraged people to film their own daughters, cousins, nieces, sisters, explicit videos of them to get access into his room. How many motherfuckers have been caught doing this nasty shit? Like, has there been some people who've gotten caught? Please tell me there's been some people who've gotten caught because there's no way this is just a flawless execution. And once they passed those three steps, the final step was an entrance fee. Eight dollars. Eight An arbitrary number that means nothing to him. It's the price of a Big Mac with a large fry and soda. Eight dollars. The doctor's vetting process was flipped. He would get an ID from the watchers, but the most important step for him was the payment. What? His rooms would start at $187 and go all the way up to $1,200. And that's just the entry fee. If you want additional bespoke, tailor-made content, there would be a fee for that as well. Bespoke. But the problem with the doctor's method is that guess who else has access to money and fake IDs? The police? Yes. The police had infiltrated the chat rooms. They were in the doctor's room. Thank you. Get the They're there watching, analyzing, waiting. They're logging every piece of single content and message, just waiting for someone to slip up. I mean, come on, make a mistake. They just need an identity or even just a clue, a lead to catch the doctor. 
Mm -hmm. But instead, they're going to catch something else. A child? The police are staring at a new video that had been released in the chat rooms. It takes them a moment to understand what they're looking at because they're so used to seeing torture videos show up on this feed. And this one was almost disorienting. It was of a fully clothed girl filming herself walking into a building. Oh, they... They look up from their phones. Oh, shit. And they're like, what is going on? Oh, shit. They got... got they, they know that they're watching. The background of that video looks like here. Oh. Earlier that day, a girl had walked into the police station to report all the things that she had endured from the doctor and his chat rooms. The police had taken her to a back room to take her statement, but they had no idea that she was recording the entire thing. The entire video was uploaded to the chat room. Oh. The police interrogation? Or the Wait, police? Not an interrogation because she's a victim. Oh, right, right, right. The police conversation? Yes. She recorded it. She uploaded it? it? She uploaded it because she was forced to. Oh, It was oh. one of the sickest videos that they would watch in the chat rooms. And sure, the victim is fully clothed. There, there, there was no physical violence in the video, but they saw how shaken she was in person, recounting every little thing that the doctor made her do. They saw how ashamed she was saying that to a room full of strange men that she'd never met before. And now that video was uploaded into the chat. And the doctor was sending a very, very clear message. Mm. One, I know you're in here. And two, he got off on the reliving of her trauma, forcing her to tell strangers about it. It was also a way to show her and the other victims that it doesn't matter if you report me to the cops. I'm not scared. In fact, I'm going to let you report me. And lastly, he was showing the police, see, I can have them report me. And what? You're still not going to find me. And the worst part of it was it was true. Mm -hmm. They knew nothing about the doctor. I mean, it seemed like he knew everything about them. He even had this knowledge room, which is like a separate chat room with the notice that read, you must be aware of the concept of police profiling. There were step-by-step -step methods provided for watchers, instructions on how to avoid being investigated, tips on creating new ideas. This whole shit is just a community of freaky fucks. Like, this is disgusting. Entities. Using common words as nicknames to make it harder for police to track you. Using anonymous Ugh. sites. Compressing files with a strong password. All the instructions and tips the doctors gave to the watchers, it's like he knew how the police operated and what they needed to track people. He knew their process. What did they know about the doctor? If you told the police to write down everything that they knew on a piece of paper, it would look a little goofy. It would read, he's a man in his 40s. Okay, no, maybe 50s? Perhaps he's a writer, mm. office worker? He's well-educated for sure. In messages, the doctor would taunt the police and he would use these traditional Korean words that most young people don't even know about. The police thought he could either be like an office worker or maybe he runs like a PI firm or maybe he does phone scams or maybe he's like a loan shark or again, maybe he's a writer. He could be in South Korea or China or Cambodia, but they couldn't like rule enigma. out other countries definitively. So basically, they had nothing on the doctor. The doctor might as well have been one of the 12.9 million men in South Korea or one of the 4 billion oh, men in the world. God. But that's okay. What do you mean? Because everybody loves a good underdog story. Oh. Uh. Within a week, a new Telegram user had risen to the ranks of one of the chat rooms, enough so that they were given the honor of managing one of the doctor's rooms. He became an accomplice. And it's very interesting because he just popped out of nowhere. He joined the chat rooms July 2019, and his username was Rabbit. And within a week, he's given a chat room. The chat loved him. I mean, at first he would say these disgustingly bold things. He would say things like, oh, I don't do girls over 12. I also have videos of myself doing an eight-year-old. I'll post those later tonight. Is he like supposed to be the mole or something? It's giving mole-ish. But there was just it. something off about the rabbit. Oh. Other than the fact that he's in a CP group chat with yeah. a bunch of other men, uh -huh. the other guys were able to pick up on this weird energy. Like, right away. It's like he studied the chat rooms to figure out the right things to say. He spoke like everybody else. He commented most of the same things. He used the right... E so y'all so y'all got the ability to, to, to notice weird energy, but you ain't got the ability to notice that what you're doing is weird as fuck. This is where, this is where your energy senses just turn off, right? I for sure. You best okay. slang. But it's like he just did it a little too often. If you're chatting with someone on Telegram, it lets you know when they're online or when they're last online. And Rabbit's status was always online all the time, just blinking, blinking. Even if there was no activity in the chat, it's like he's always watching oh, or God. studying what to say. Why is he always online? Was that, is that God God? 
And the most annoying thing was he would ask the chat to hang out as if he's like a he's in a fraternity or best friend group chat. By the way, any of you losers want to meet up tonight? No one would respond because it like in real life. Yeah. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, it's all supposed to be anonymous. Mm -hmm. The other chat members were so suspicious of him that they were convinced that either A, he's super weird or B, he's an undercover cop. Their suspicions would only grow when Rabbit would send pictures of Starbucks that he was at and like what station he was at. And he'd be like, hey, guys, if anyone comes to this Starbucks right now, coffee's on me. The fuck? Yeah. Hours serious. would pass. Nobody would show up. And then Rabbit would double text into the chat. Why did nobody come? Two chat room members responded. It'll take me six hours to get there. You uh, forward. Oh, Haha, enjoy your coffee alone, bitch. Rabbit realized since he was new, maybe he needs to earn their trust. Maybe he's like, well, of course they're not going to meet up with me. They don't even know who I am. So Rabbit texted, I'm a real guy. I started college a year ago at Chunnam National University. I swear. No response. My vision is bad. It's like a negative three. Look, look at my medical record. He texted a picture of his medical record. The fuck? Without his name. Uh no answer. Rabbit would send another picture into the group chat. Guys, can you believe I failed my physical for the military? I had blood in my urine. No answer. So this is God. He sends God. another picture of or his medical the, records. Guys, doctor? look, they want me to go back to take my physical. I'm going to be at Chosan University Hospital on August 8th. Anybody want to come? The fuck? No respond. What? I mean, at this point, the rest of the chat is suspicious. Like, why is he being so direct? Why does he keep trying to meet up? Why does he not get the hint? And then one day, Rabbit disappeared. Uh, His account was no longer active and he stopped sending random texts. Rabbit was at the police station. And everybody thought, because he's a cop. But he wasn't. He was there telling the authorities absolutely everything that he knew about the chat room. Turns out there was an undercover cop in the group chat, but oh, it wasn't Rabbit. What? The police had a burner account that was flying under the radar. It was basically incognito. They weren't commenting anything. They weren't doing anything. And they weren't being suspicious because Rabbit was always taking all the attention. Oh. And it just so happens that Rabbit had doxxed himself with his own medical records, provided evidence of distribution of CP, as well as a full confession. Uh, what? Wait, so what's his deal? He was just overly excited. What? Yeah. The what police the finally had their big break. They caught a rabbit. Ah, oh, this nigga was too horny. No pun. Wow. That's, it's all, the trash will always take itself out. Wow. All the police had in their hunt was a rabbit. But JTBC, a giant news network in South uh -oh. Korea, was hunting a whale. A crypto whale. A whale. So if you remember from part one, two of the <clears throat> biggest South Korean news networks, JTBC and SBS, they mm -hmm. released episodes exposing these chat rooms. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew who the doctor or God God was, but the producers had interactions with the doctor. If you recall from part one, the doctor liked to play games with the producers. He's very confident that they would never catch him. And in an attempt to make the chase more fun, to make the game more fun, he tried to level the playing field. He showed the producers his crypto account where he collects pay for the rooms then he forced a deal on them he told them if they air the episodes he will create victims for them the news network's very own victims this is fucking crazy before sbs aired their episode they received a video of a young underage girl fully unclothed with nothing but a plastic bag over her head and red string tied around her neck Jesus she Christ. told the producers if they air the episode on the chat rooms she's gonna light herself on fire in front of the headquarters SBS aired the episode, they were able to locate the girl and secure her safety. Now, JTBC received a similar threat. If they air the episode, the doctor was going to dox a new victim in all of his chat rooms, not just his VIP rooms. Thousands of men are going to see this victim's home address, her full government name, all of her details, her work address, mm. everything. And what happens when all those dangerous men find it? Well, that would be on JTBC's hands. That's what the doctor said. So this time, they don't have a victim photo or video to go off of. There's no way to secure their safety. The victim's not made yet. But JTBC aired the episode anyway because they felt like what they had on the doctor would finally bring him down. When JTBC's episode aired, the doctor's chat rooms were crazy active. They had made these episode releases an event. Everyone would grab what dinner or fuck? lunch, sit down, live watch the show, and comment in the chats about it. 
They'd be like, ding, it's on. This is going to be fun. They're talking bullshit from the start. God, they don't even know their victims. She's God, God's slave, not the doctors. Isn't she in the fifth room of the nth rooms? I feel like I recognize her from there. This is so dumb. They think that she's one of the doctors. The fuck? So nobody even was worried. No. Huh. Oh, here comes another one. This one's actually the doctors. The doctor, you got way too many slaves. The doctor would join in on the fun. Look, they're calling me a Hikiko Mori. That's fucking wow. hilarious. Those are a phenomenon where people don't leave their house for years. The Korean police say that they're going to catch me. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. While the episode focused on victim stories and like the depravity of their crimes, the chat was filled with just jokes to the reporters. Hey, journalists, if you're in here watching this right now, thanks for making us famous. This is another good one. We love this episode. Can't wait to see all the newcomers coming in. Mm -hmm. To them, the doctor is a whale and the producers and the police, I mean, they're like little ants. They're just having fun with them. That's all. Entertaining their sad attempts at picking a fight. Or at least that's how they felt. Until the JTBC episode cut to a producer standing in front of a crypto exchange center oh, in shit. Seoul. Oh, Wait, is that... The reporters announced that they received a tip that the doctor would use this very crypto exchange center to turn his crypto payments from his viewers into cash. Ooh. The chat starts blowing up. Ooh. The messages are moving so fast. By the time that you read one, it's already gone. Another message has taken its place. They found best coin. No way. Everybody who sent money is so freaking screwed. They're going to know who the depositors are. What oh. are we going to do now, doctor? Hello? What are we going to do? Are we... Oh, shit. The doctor ranted to the chat rooms. Is this really okay for producers to be ruining a man's business like this? But I digress. I know that many of you guys are worried after watching the show. Many of you guys have asked if we're going to be okay. And I've proven myself time and time again. I have overcome a lot. You can trust me and join these rooms. Nah, fuck that. The watchers were hesitant. They can trace the doctor's crypto. Does that mean that they can trace him? Yes. Wait, no, right? Wait. Because crypto is untraceable right? Crypto is so untraceable that it's inevitably traceable, okay? Let me explain. Bitcoin <laughs> and Ethereum are considered transparent blockchains, mm -hmm. meaning everybody's wallet is publicly visible on the blockchain. You can mm -hmm. see every transaction that's ever made, but you cannot see who the wallet owners are. So if you were able to find out whose wallet that is, then yeah, theoretically, you could see how much they have in that wallet and their transaction history. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't know whose wallet they're transacting with. So you get a little bit of information, but not the full picture. <clears throat> now you have Monero. It's another cryptocurrency, but it's different in the sense that it's called a privacy coin, meaning no one knows how much you have in your wallet. No one knows how much you sent, how much you received, to which addresses you sent to and to which addresses sent to you. So if nobody knows the doctor's Bitcoin or Ethereum wallet and the doctor's crypto is untraceable and because Monero is a privacy coin, it's nearly impossible to track, then he should be fine, right? But then there's a problem with the exchange center because most places do not accept crypto as a payment, mm -hmm. at least as of right now. Like I can't walk into Trader Joe's and buy soup dumplings and exchange it with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. The most popular ways that people can actually spend their crypto is to now bring the money back on the paper trail. Damn. And typically there's two ways to do that. One, you sell the crypto and you transfer the funds into your bank account. Or two, you go to an exchange center and you literally cash out on your crypto. You exchange your crypto for cash, <laughs> basically like crypto ATMs, <laughs> which is what the producers found. They found which crypto exchange center Oh, the doctor shit. uses okay okay but the doctor is way too smart to walk into the crypto exchange center and exchange his crypto for cash by himself right so there's no way no sense that they can track that? the doctor the doctor would send others to exchange crypto into cash Makes sense. in the korean crime world it's called <clears throat> a money tanja so it's like a money throw if you will mm -hmm. so the doctor will send out a little bit of crypto to all his little errand boys they will go exchange the crypto into cash at the exchange center drop off the cash for the doctor at a specific drop point and then for their work most of them would receive free access to torture videos what the fuck? which if they know which crypto exchange center the doctor uses does that mean they can follow the doctor by following the money. Mm -hmm. It was enough for the police to get a solid lead. Oh. They knew about which exchange center and now they had a tip come in that the doctor had a favorite errand boy that he liked to use for throwing money. Oh, so a nine-year-old boy. No way. Yeah. Huh? So in theory, most crimes can be solved by following the money. If the police are following the money, would they just follow this little nine-year-old boy that walked into the crypto exchange center? Is that what they have to do? 
That would lead them to a fire hydrant in a random apartment building in the city. The investigators are crammed into the CCTV room and they're watching old footage at a random apartment building outside of Seoul. They're like, wait, what is that? So everybody's leaning in and they see this pixelated figure inside of the elevator. It's so pixelated, you can't even really tell if it's a male or a female or anything, really. You just know that they're dressed in dark clothes and they're holding this package, maybe like a brick sized package. And that's it. But what's so interesting about it, will the police say, keep watching. And they see this figure carry their little package out the door. And as they're exiting the elevator, they hit closed door. The button. So they want the door to close quickly. Yeah, and that's weird. The only CCTV cameras in the entire building are in the main lobby and in the elevators. Mm -hmm. There are no cameras in the hallways. So whatever they're doing, once they get out on this floor, they don't want the CCTV cameras to see. So they keep investigating and they could see that the elevators did not close on time. Uh There's only two apartments on this floor and that person was not headed towards either of them. They were headed towards the stairwell. Why take the elevator then go to the stairwell? What? Right. Doesn't make any sense. When the authorities go to that stairwell, they find a silver door. It's a fire extinguisher box. So in South Korea, the fire extinguisher boxes are not see-through like the American ones. It's like a metal locker that can be opened and closed by anyone. But at the same time, nobody can see through it. And nobody just like goes around opening fire extinguisher boxes. Mm -hmm. It's the only spot that made sense. This is the money drop location. They found this area by tailing the little nine-year-old. And then they found other people coming in and out and leaving money in this fire extinguisher box. Oh, wow. It's very interesting. They found various different people coming in to drop off money, like 17-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 9-year-olds. There were a lot of different people involved, all doing money drops. But only one person was taking the money out every single time. Ah. But there was no way that that was the doctor. Because the police were looking at a schoolgirl with a brown brick-like paper package in her hands headed out. She's the only one that took money out of that fire extinguisher box. It was Mm -hmm. a girl. A little girl. A girl? Okay. When they follow her with unmarked cars, plainclothes officers, the hunt is on. They follow this schoolgirl from a distance. They watch her hand off the brown package to another guy. And they both immediately separate. Okay. So now the majority of the officers are tailing after the guy because he's the next link in the money drop. Like the girl's just going back home. Wait, but what if the girl sent off like a fake drop? The guy has a baby face, a rice bowl haircut. The police hoped that maybe he's one or two links away from the doctor. They think that they're going to catch the doctor today. And immediately after taking the money from the schoolgirl, the guy, let's call him Guy 1, takes the money straight to another guy, Guy 2. Guy 2 is a bit older. Maybe this is the doctor. But as the police watch, they realize Guy 1 is not passing the money off to Guy 2. Guy 2 is giving Guy One more money. Huh? Hmm. The money ends with Guy One. Okay. Guy One shoves the package into his bag and walks over to a booth where people are protesting. He chats with a few of the protesters and they pass him a clipboard and he scribbles on it. On it, it would read, name, Cho Ju Bin, birthday, October 14th, 1995, and his cell phone number. Oh shit. The police went from having nothing on the doctor having to everything. having his full name, date oh, of birth, shit. and phone number. Wait, what, what is oh. he doing? He's signing a petition. For what? To do what? To petition? It's like one what of those you- like petitions of like, please, climate change. Peti- Bro, thank you. I'm so happy that it's always one slip up that will fuck a fucker up. Get this nigga the fuck out of here. He signed a petition. Boy, you thought you was smart. I know something else is going to happen because it's like 30, 40 minutes left in this. But let's go. For Get him out of here. No reason. Huh. Yeah. Did he use a different and name? Knew oh. This has got to be the doctor. He was the end of the money link. The money was never passed off. They kept watching him. It ended with him. Okay. 
Authorities locate this man's house and they start staking it out. Now, they can't barge in because he could easily delete Telegram or even log out, which again would delete all the evidence. He could throw all of his phones into the toilet. He could destroy things. They would have to arrest him while he was out of the house to make sure that they could preserve all the evidence that was inside. Mm -hmm. March 16th, 2020. Oh, shit. Like a year after he starts his Telegram. The perfect opportunity comes. Let's go. Mr. Cho is going to teach his 24-year-old son, Cho Jubin, how to ride, how to a, ride bike. a bike. Ah. They did not know they have a full audience. He's learning how to ride a bike because he has to relearn how to do all these things because of his oh, legs. Oh, his legs. Oh, his legs. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> they were about 40 police officers working to catch his every movement. This nigga they had here. officers nearby the subway, the bus <clears> routes, <throat> another group sitting near his home. And right before Cho and his dad entered the house. I would have jumped on his ass while he was getting leg surgery house they were stopped by the police and arrested he was brought into the police station where he argued i am not the doctor and then he tried to swallow a pen and die mm. i mean the police had so much evidence against cho though and he knew it he very quickly same day admits you know what i am in fact the doctor we want to know about the cash that's stuffed into the shoe boxes the crypto wallets the second phone that we found squeezed in between your couch cushions what's the password to what the second phone. What's the password? Sushi. Excuse me? Mm. I want to eat sushi. I was going to go eat sushi with my dad, but you arrested us after our bike ride, so I didn't get the chance to eat sushi. Okay, if fuck you, you and sushi, your sushi. Maybe I might tell you my password. Punch this thing in the face. After sushi, he was too tired to let them know the password. The next day came around. Tell us the password. Desing man. Black bean noodles? doctor nodded Bro, somebody the day shoot after this it was burgers for 30 days it was like he was asking for a different food each time he never told them the password the authorities would actually find the password themselves one of the first things that the police noticed when they searched cho's house were the writings on the wall literally his entire bedroom was filled with scribbles all over the walls Fuck. and they didn't seem like scribbles of someone who had lost their grasp on reality does his parents see this shit like does his parents not clean his room like, how do y'all not find these scribbles on the wall? And they're like losing their minds. This felt very intentional. Like the scribbles are meaning something. Like the numbers and the letters, they all point to something. And they did. I mean, the police just didn't know what. Mm -hmm. They didn't spell out anything that they could string together. So when Cho didn't give them the password, they went back to the writings on the wall. Mm -hmm. Maybe he hid the password somewhere here. But where? I mean, the probability of us finding the password is just like slim to none. I mean, he's still going to be a creature of comfort, though, of convenience. We all are. So they checked the writing near his desk where he might be using his phone. No, nothing. They checked the writing near the couch. There is no writing near the couch that's in the living room. So nothing. The police look around the bed. I mean, he would use his phone in bed, right? They start scanning through the writings on the wall and none of them are working. They're like, try this one. Not working. Try this one. Not working. Then where the hell is the password? And then they look up. All the officers had slowly turned, and on the ceiling was more writing. What the fuck? A password. It would unlock his second phone. In the photo album of the second phone were the personal IDs of many of his victims. Explicit pictures and videos were oh, found of shit. over 90 different victims just oh on this God. one phone. Oh, my God. What the fuck? And a surprising conversation between the doctor and God God of the nth rooms. God God suggested if we go down, we should take all the victims down with us. The authorities had caught the doctor before he could make any videos public. But now, now they need to catch God God mm. because it seems like he's planning to take down all the victims with him. Experts who had been in the chat room stated, if Cho, the doctor, did this for the sake of money, God God did it simply for the sake of having fun. Like a Unlike the hell. doctor, he had spread around the videos and photos pretty freely to other people, just so that he could further hurt his victims. If he knew that giving everyone the free videos was going to hurt his victims even more, he would have done it in a heartbeat. And there's this saying, if you can't beat them, you got to join them. So that's what Team Red was here to do. Team Red is like the anonymous of South Korea. They are literally anonymous hackers. Oh. They saw the SBS and JTBC episodes on God God and they wanted to help. Okay. They offered their services to the police. They're like, we're going to catch God God for you. Oh, we got They're some... like, how are you going to do that? We've been trying to catch God God for your, like over a year now. We're going to do it by doing what he does. We're going to go fishing. A fishing link with a PH 
fishing is like setting bait for your catch. You send a link, and oftentimes the link looks like a legitimate well-known website, like mm -hmm. a link to a cyber crimes investigative unit or a Twitter. They look legit. Now, side note, those were God God's favorite links to send to victims to get all their personal information. Mm. So God God played into his victims' anxieties. He would threaten to tell their parents about their photos or threaten to arrest them for producing pornography which is illegal in South Korea. And because they were so anxious to not get in trouble, his victims would click on these suspicious links. And that's exactly what Team Red would do. They would message into the chat room. Hey, God, God, there's been a new tip line opened up. They've been collecting information about you through this link. The preview of the link read SBS collecting information about the nth rooms. God, God's finger hovered over the blue link. And then he clicked. Oh, shit. They were in. Let's go. Team Red now had access out to his IP address, which Wi-Fi network that he was using, and the exact cell phone model he was using. Ooh. Just like that. One click. Wow. One click. That's scary. Wow. The police would use those key factors to pinpoint his location, and they would go <clears throat> hunt down God God. They were led to a junkyard, and in the midst of all the trash, they see a man standing there in front of them with like 10 to 15 phones just in his arms. The police seize his phones, they handcuff him, they get a full view of his shirt. It's like a black whale on his shirt, just like a whale shirt. Yeah, it was so anticlimactic, the police said it didn't even feel real. The God God, who is now finally in custody, I mean, it was so clear, he's no God. Firing squad. He also had a very similar complexion <clears throat> to Cho, the doctor. So both were on the, quote, heavier side with moon-shaped faces. That's how they're described by media. They're both very young, only 24, both of them. They're both like in college or just graduated. That's so crazy how identical they are. They're both really smart too. They both had really great grades in college and got into pretty, like, pretty prestigious colleges. And y'all just God, God was an architecture student. What? Yeah. And Cho was a writing student. Okay. Very interesting, right? Was that why they thought Cho was really good at writing? Yeah, and he would uh, use all these like very traditional Korean words that no young people use. That's oh, why they thought he was 50. I see. But he's actually 24. Wow. So God, God, God Moon Young Wook was finally in custody. And Seoul became Gotham City. I mean, Seoul was lockdown one in 100 men that is the estimate that netizens were circulating after this case went oh, viral. 260,000 users of the doctor's room and the nth rooms the population of korea is 51 million people that is one in 200 people Holy or shit. one in 100 men oh technically shit. half the viewers of these chat rooms were not even korean they were foreigners but that would still mean one in every 200 men could have been a viewer of these chat rooms. Wow. And then if you take all the kids and that that the number even gets crazier. Oh crazier. My God. Ordinary women who have never even imagined something like this could take place, they're forced to face the idea that someone that they know, someone at work, their boss, their pastor, their husband, that is brother, scary. dad, son could be a watcher. I mean, it felt like full chaos in the city. Churches are praying for the cleansing of the nation. Wives, girlfriends, sisters are demanding to go through family members' phones trying to find any evidence. Why is it so like in Korea? It's just so much shit happening. Like I guess I guess that's just the what comes with the territory of having a country and also just, I guess, recency bias in watching these Rotten Mango videos. Because I know over here, it's like always some shit happening here. So I can't even, I'm not even about to say too much. I'm like, God damn. That they had visited these chat rooms. Other parents are frantically checking their children for injuries, like mm. trying to force them to prove that they didn't harm themselves <clears throat> for videos. School administrators are busy trying to prevent students from circulating articles and speculations of who could have been in the nth rooms. Vigilante justice websites are popping up everywhere, Bro. accusing random people of being nth room watchers. Some of them weren't even watchers. Oh. Some of them were. Colleagues are accusing each other of being watchers. People are terrified of clicking any link that looks suspicious because what if it downloads those videos onto their phone? I mean, how is anybody going to sleep comfortably at night knowing that these types of chat rooms exist and that one in every 200 men in Korea could have been on these chat rooms? So netizens, they demand a few things from the get-go. One, they want the perpetrator's identities to be released. Okay, so... In South Korea, there is a seven-person committee that votes on whether or not criminals' identities should be released to the public. Most criminal identities, by default, are kept private. Oh. So it's not like the U.S. They have to meet four criteria to even think about publicizing their identities. The four criteria are the crime has to be violent and cruel. There must be sufficient evidence to prove the suspect has committed the crime. 
disclosure of the identity is for the public good uh -huh. and the suspect has to be an adult so those four things okay second they want all identities of all watchers of all users of the chat rooms to be released and third they want the perpetrators to get the book thrown at them they want them in prison for life the chair First request release all identities of all the perpetrators that's this part was a bit convoluted and not that pertinent in the grand scheme of things, but the doctor's identity was actually revealed because the police told the press that they're going to do a COVID test on an inmate who is suspected of being the doctor of the Telegram chat rooms. All right. Mm -hmm. At that point, the press didn't even know they made an arrest. Mm. They just made a press release that there was an inmate that they need to test for COVID. And his crime is being the suspect for being the doctor of the Telegram chat rooms. So the press is like, we didn't even know that you made an arrest on that. So they start going crazy. Like, why would you hide this from us? Why are you hiding oh, his identity? People were oh. rioting on the streets. A petition was signed by over 5 million people to release the perpetrator's full identities and even the watcher's identities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God God Moon was brought to the public for the first time after his arrest. And his face was publicized. His name was publicized. There were cameras flashing around his face. Reporters were asking him, would you like to say anything? Nigga, fuck that. Don't let this I nigga talk. I want to tell the victims and their families that I'm sorry. Suck dick. Shut up, bitch. No, fuck out of here. What was the purpose of your crimes? I think that I had corrupt ethics. What's your relationship with Cho Jubin, the doctor? I don't know him. I don't want to hear this shit from this fuck nigga. What the, I don't want to hear this shit. I'm not hearing this shit. Fuck you. All over again, but it's it's so empty. Hold on, we're gonna go back. We're gonna mute this. We're gonna mute this shit. I don't want to hear nothing you gotta say, nasty ass nigga. As the police escorted him the into fuck? the car, he would just repeat, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, all over again. No, but you're not sorry. It's so empty. You're not he sorry. He would even argue, well, I only received $675 Shut up. for the video. Shut up. So it's, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Shut up. I didn't even make a lot of money. That made him worse. Yeah. Yeah. Like but his statement was considered tame compared to that of the doctors. After both of their identities were released, the doctor made a statement. He was first seen in public with a neck brace on because he kept trying to harm himself. He had a Band-Aid on his head. Okay, the reason I'm kind of like laughing at that is not because I think anything is funny, but it's so ridiculous. He just kept trying to harm himself in ways that were very clearly not harmful. Like he just had a Band-Aid on his head and you just know that there's like no wound or barely any wound there. Mm. Yeah. And also I think at this point, it's one of those situations where who cares if he's in pain? Yeah, Like, like nobody cared. None of the netizens cared. Like boohoo, we don't care. Now, he comes out to the public and at first his face is blank. He's just not making eye contact, staring out. And the first thing he would say is an apology, but not to the victims of the chat rooms. He would say, I genuinely apologize to everyone who has suffered harm because of me, including JTBC president Son Seok Ki, Mayor Yoon Chang Yeon, and journalist Kim Moon. Bro, what? This is a different one from the last episode. Different journalist. What? People are like, what? what? Why is he apologizing to not the victims? And why is he apologizing to these three people? This is yeah. so random. <sighs> so in his whole, in the whole quest to find out who the doctor was, these three people, he was like blackmailing them. He was stirring up shit. He was starting rumors. The chat rooms were attacking them. And now these three people have the influence and the political weight to impact his case. What? So that's, it's speculated America. that's why he was publicly apologizing to them. The mayor, the JTBC president that controls the media, one Man, of the major media the networks of South Korea, another journalist that's been on this case since the get-go. Mm. The reporters asked him, okay, a lot of your victims are underage. Do you feel guilty about that at all? He just responded, thank you for putting a break on the life of a devil that cannot be stopped. I don't want shit you gotta say, boy. I don't want, nigga, I don't even wanna show you. Fuck, I'll show you face, you fucking ugly ass bitch. Man, shut the fuck up. I don't want your shit you talking about. Experts analyzed his statement, and that would really be one of the few statements that he would make in regards to his actions. They said by referring to himself as a devil, it seems like he was trying to put himself up on a pedestal. Yeah, he like, wasn't saying devil as in I'm so bad, but it was almost as he's, he's boasting that his deeds were unparalleled. It's like, it also sounds like, oh, y'all got me. Y'all, I'm sorry that you guys finally stopped the pain that I've been causing for the last year. Like, 
that there was God, God, but he's the devil. But, oh my God. South Koreans were not content with the release of the perpetrator's identities. They wanted the identities of the watchers to be released as well. Mm -hmm. So petitions with millions of signatures were being circulated and signed to demand a release. There was shockingly some pushback on this. What do you some mean? netizens were complaining. I feel like I'm being treated very unfairly right now that I can't even go to sleep. I don't see what's so wrong with watching adult content that I rightfully paid for on the anthrums. It's children. What are you talking about? What? Ex what? Rather than oh. punishing the users of the anthrums, they should go after the girls who filmed themselves. No, 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 uh, 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 hell no. Fee and producing uh, uh, videos, explicit videos in nah. South Korea is illegal. Nah. So technically, oh, they're nah. breaking the law. Nah, hell no. Like, yeah. He just outed himself. Yeah. Another netizen wrote that he was a victim by watching those videos. He said now he carries psychological stress Shut of not reporting up. the videos when he should have. He said because he never reported it and now that it was exposed, he feels like people are going to think that he's a watcher. Well. Which he was. Yeah. yeah, what? But like now he has a lot of psychological stress and he oh, feels word? pretty victimized. Damn, that's crazy. Mm. Kill. All right. Yeah. That's peace. <laughs> Others probably commented Fuck. that they would never get caught. They said, well, I watched it all on a Google Drive and I actually never downloaded the video. So good luck, idiots. I think so many people sign also probably comes from they want to know who's around their, their yeah. family, right? Yeah. Like, that's scary. I also wonder if a lot of people would bring up Anthrims on purpose. Like, I feel like I would have done that just to kind mm -hmm. of gauge mm -hmm. energies of people mm -hmm. just to see how they react. And that's kind of interesting because people were circulating tips for the watchers on how not to get caught. So one of the threads going around was a list of all the petitions that were being made demanding harsher punishment and the release of all the identities of the users. The thread suggested that if you were a watcher, you should sign all the petitions with your government name. So in Korea, you sign them like with your government name, because naturally, I guess human psychology would make the watchers want to distance themselves as far away as possible. So it was argued actually in these threads, like when people talk about Enthro, don't say things like oh no i don't keep up with news like that because immediately you're weird you're suspicious yeah. okay. so the threads were advising instead of distancing yourself from the case you should lean into it don't shy away from it you want to support the fight for justice so that nobody suspects you mm -hmm. then there were some netizens who felt upset by the telegram news because they never got a chance to watch it they started taking to hub and other explicit adult websites to see what the videos were about the week of when the news of the end rooms really exploded all these explicit adult websites had a spike in searches that included variations of the words telegram and room chat room korean that is high disgusting. school korean middle school Fool. korean chat room middle school what the fuck oh and this was not just in south korea it wasn't just south koreans searching this this was happening globally so after hearing the horrors of the nth room, there were people who wanted to see it for themselves. Oh my God. For the pleasure. Ew. When the trending searches were exposed, netizens were freaking out. They were commenting, can't they track the people who search for that too? What the fuck? These people need to stop pretending to be human. You guys are all disgusting. Why are they even alive? Like really, this is insane. You must be out of your minds. A netizen would create a blue house petition asking for the creation of a cyber crime division, harsher prison sentences for offenders, and the need for joint internal investigations for these crimes. It would get over 100,000 signatures very quickly. Now, one congressman would say in response, does every petition have to become a law? What? Another politician was asked about his opinion on the Enthroom case, and he responded nonchalantly, I'm not too familiar, but perhaps the performer, he's talking about the victim, used it as an artistic outlet. You an nth roomer. You one of them. You. You one of them. Hell no. Nah, you one of them. Because there's no fucking way. You're one of the, There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Nah. Another congressman nah. said, if I'm only consuming <sighs> these videos for self-pleasure, is there a reason to be prosecuted? If I alone paint a picture, I can't be prosecuted for the law. Wait. These are... Politicians. You're one of them. Yeah, like they just outed themselves. Yeah, yeah. like what? Precisely. Huh? What the fuck? Yeah. What? Exactly my thoughts. And this case wasn't just impacting the country on a big national political scale. <sighs> it was infiltrating young people's everyday lives, like everybody's lives, not even just the victims. And I say that not to emphasize like, oh, there's other victims because... 
I don't like the victims of the Anthrim cases are the victims of the Anthrim cases. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of collateral damage that was done to the society and yeah. to families. But I don't know if I would categorize them as victims, right? But just to show you the big widespread implications of this case, there's an anonymous forum where a lot of college students and high schoolers will go. This one high school girl posted on there and she went by the username Miss A. She said that she had a dilemma in her personal life. She said she had been dating this guy and he confessed to her the other day. Hey, you know the Enthrum thing that's been going around? Well, I saw the videos, but I didn't know that the girls were being forced to do all those things. I thought they were just making it for, you know, consumption. I thought it was just like explicit material they were making. The girl posted that she felt really gross about his yeah, response because she wrote, I mean, the videos weren't normal, you know? Like, yeah, like... You can't really... They're doing explicitly weird and terrible things. And not to mention, like, I heard that when you see the Enthrum videos, you can just tell that they're not of age. Like, it's very obvious. Yeah. So she told the forum that she immediately confronted her boyfriend and said, it doesn't matter if you knew or not. Like, these... Just the fact that you watched it is weird. Yeah, she stated fuck? that she broke up with him and he got very angry. And he was so angry that she wasn't trying to be considerate and understand his side of the story. She wanted to ask the audience, am I the asshole? No. For breaking up with him? No. What the fuck? No. Wow. Oh, my God. One rapper in South Korea went by the stage name Simba. And nobody asked, but he posted on Instagram saying, the more the situation for the nth room becomes intense, the more we need to be level-headed instead of becoming hot-headed with emotion. I hope there will be a cold and realistic punishment for the perpetrators. Yes, this is a case that has become a hot issue among citizens, but that does not mean the users should all be sentenced to life. That would not be fair. Plus, that would be overlooking the precedent. You want it out. Know, just because we're angry and about the case does not mean that we should increase the punishment. Cause. This could mean later, if and when your son or your brother ends up getting caught watching some pornography that their consequences will be based on the results of this very case. What if this case becomes a new standard for society and they all get sentenced to life for watching explicit videos? This is so much more than about us being upset and wanting the perpetrators to pay. Why would you say that? What is happening? The public reaction went as well as you would imagine. Nigga, People what? were flooding his Instagram with comments asking him if he was one of the 260,000. Some said, just keep your mouth shut, okay? If you don't know what you're talking about, this random ass rapper. If my brother gets caught watching shit like this, getting sentenced to life isn't going to happen to him because I'm going to kill him myself. Uh -huh. Other netizens tried to reason with him. They said, what if your sister or your girlfriend or your mother gets tricked into this crime and becomes a victim of these perpetrators? Would you still want them to be punished reasonably? Like, have you thought about it like that? The rapper responded to the comments and he doubled down. My dear feminist friends, if it makes you feel better, then go ahead and leave your hate here. I can't understand why such great people with great ideals don't have real Instagram accounts, but whatever. I can only assume that you can't read long statements because you're all stupid and lazy, but I'm truly amused by the fact that you thought that I meant, quote, I need my right to watch porn. I guess now the world knows that you guys don't have the brains. What the fuck is happening? Ha, uh, you know what? Go ahead. Find all the doctor-related people, even the ones who watched, and have them killed. I never watched it, so... People would end up dying. At least six people self-exited in connection with the Enthroom case. Holy they were exposed shit. as watchers of the Enthrooms, and they were scared of the consequences of their actions. Yeah, they could not stomach the idea of dealing with the consequences. But they can stomach watching these videos. That's, that's, y'all uh, get out of here. But they could stomach the visuals of hundreds yeah, like of girls what, being tortured. Yeah, like what, dude? So, I mean, do with that what you will. Oh, my it God. It felt like every other day, news was breaking <clears throat> that another person had self-exited. Netizens had a lot of mixed reactions. Some felt bad for the families that they were breaking up. Not saying that these people deserve to get off scot-free. Like, they deserve to be in prison for very long times. But it was likely a shock to wives, mothers, sisters, children. I mean, they were all collateral damage in all of this. And then another rapper got in trouble for Ooh. the exact opposite reason as Simba. So after the news broke that six men had taken their lives over the concerns that they would be exposed as watchers of the Nth Rooms... One rapper wrote, this is making me so happy. If more of them die, I'll write a commemorative song. Let's all reveal all their identities. Who said that? He even added a story of the Han River saying, let's go. This is the Han River, kiddos. Who said that? Talking to the people who are watching. 
And a lot of, it, he had mixed responses from netizens. Some netizens called him out for having a song 10 years ago that referenced underage essay. He was also found to be drunk driving a few years back, so he doesn't have the cleanest reputation. Who is this? Others just analyzed the intention behind his message, and they said that he was encouraging self-exiting. Others felt kind of torn. They said, tough call. I mean, on one hand, we shouldn't celebrate. But on the other hand, that person is trash who contributed to the victimization of women and children. So who is that? Another reads, I wouldn't necessarily cheer for their deaths, but I sure as hell would not shed a tear for them either. Who is the rapper? The police tracked down 124 why people are you? in relation to the crimes. And why the fuck? Stephanie, why did you just... Ign who is the rapper? Yo, I swear, if this is who I think it is, I swear. 18 people oh were formally God. detained. The doctor and God God were sick, but these guys were just as depraved and sick for helping these two. One of them, An Sung Jin, helped God God, and he alone had distributed over a thousand child exploitation videos. Oh my he God. He even essayed a 12 year old girl, and when he was asked, Why would you do that? he said he R worded her out of, quote, sexual curiosity. Wow, try to try to imagine saying that what? as an answer. What the yeah. fuck, I, bro? Yeah, I don't even... And it's very interesting. I think the analyzation of these two perpetrators, the doctor and God God, is that the doctor, Cho, is the definition of an incel. Mm. He hates women. Mm -hmm. He wants money. He wants power. And to a degree, he wants to be loved by a woman but probably they have to fit a very unrealistic, bizarre idea that he has of what a woman is. Mm -hmm. He has bone deep insecurities. Literally, he would break his bones yeah, and undergo like, one of the most painful cosmetic surgeries on the market just bitch. to be like three inches taller. He's 5'7", by the way, after a surgery. Yeah. He's willing to risk not being able to walk, not being able to do anything to for a five, year seven. after that surgery. So he's deeply insecure, and he also has a tendency to blame women collectively for everything bad in his life. He also has a clear fixation on money and power. Money gives him the power, and that's his end goal. He's chasing the power. All of those combined create the definition of an incel. This is crazy. This nigga wanted all this just to be a fucking d doctor. That's okay. The doctor was an incel who wanted money and power, but God, God, he was just a sadist. Mm. He just got off on the pain. It wasn't even really the power. It was just the pain. So it's the case of the incel and the sadist and all of Korea wanted to see them burn. But just because you want a bonfire doesn't mean you're going to get one. If Dr. and God God had posters on their walls of their biggest inspiration or hero, it would probably be a tiny Korean guy in a baseball cap. His name is Son jong -woo. What the fuck? We're going to call him jong -woo. And he got away with running the world's biggest, most prolific CP website on the history of the internet. What? He was only 21 years old. What? What the fuck? Authorities who worked on this case stated by volume, there were more CP videos on his one website than they had seen on any other dark website before this. And it was confirmed by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that half the videos on there were originals. They were unique pieces of data that had never been seen before. Oh. Meaning, they had been made for the sole purpose of being uploaded to chong website. Oh no, what the so fuck? He, this was before and through. He was arrested a year before Enthroom. And that's why his name comes up a lot when the when the doctor and God God were being arrested because they were assuming, netizens are assuming that their sentencing is going to be very similar to his sentencing. Well, he uh -huh. Now, the website that Chongul had was called Welcome to Video. And unlike the Enth Room and the Doctor's Room, you had to be on the dark web to access it. Uh -huh. The banner of the website read, Do not upload adult content. Because the creator, Chongu, wanted CP. He wanted mainly videos of infants. What the fuck? At its peak, the website had 1.2 million members and over 250,000 unique videos. Again, that means videos that were not seen anywhere else on the dark web prior Yo, to this. New fuck, victims, bro? new acts of violence produced exclusively for this website. That's Content awesome. was downloaded over a million times. Users were encouraged to upload their own videos. Chongu, the founder, would encourage users to kidnap infants, film them, are wording the infants for the sake of producing content for why are these people aren't dead like this is why why are, wh like what type of human rights got these people to not get killed like i'm trying to figure out like ooh, like what do we what his website and they did so a lot of fbi investigators who tried to take down welcome to video they said 
you know, you're kind of expecting videos of maybe people that are in the teen range, 13, 16. Uh -huh. The most popular search terms were one year old, two year old, four year old, young infant and babies. Oh my God. The youngest children being abused on that site were only six months old. In exchange for this type of content being uploaded, Chengwu, the creator, would give those users rewards points, which could be exchanged for video downloads. So they ran very similar to the Telegram chat rooms. It's speculated that the Telegram chat room creators, God God, the doctor, they were inspired by Welcome to Video. So we think that the doctor is inspired by God God, but perhaps they were both inspired by Chengwu from Welcome to Video. But Wel he was caught. Yeah, so Welcome to Video actually flew under the radar for a really long time on the dark web, and it wasn't even discovered by South Korean authorities. And it's not even just a South Korean. It, the founder, I don't want to say founder. I don't know what other word to use. Chongwu, right? He's South Korean, but this was a global issue. Like, this was discovered because people in other foreign nations were getting arrested and they found welcome to video on their computers. What the it fuck? was terrifying. Like, they had never seen anything like this before. The U.S. gets involved. And oddly enough, the IRS would be the ones to take down the website. What? Because it's financial fraud. Oh. Yeah. What? The IRS has, like, their own investigation team. It's crazy. So 337 people would be arrested. The network of video production spanned across at least 38 countries and at least in 23 states. A lot of the watchers had very alarming occupations. One was a federal agent for Homeland Security. Another was a vice principal of a high school in Georgia. One man ran a daycare in Kansas. There were former congressional aides, a former border patrol agent, which side note, this border patrol agent is absolutely vile. Authorities found that he had an active GoFundMe running where he was raising funds to adopt his wife's daughter from a previous relationship he's like this is my stepdaughter and i want to formally adopt her he was simultaneously as he has that gofundme simultaneously uploading videos of himself fully abusing that stepdaughter in on videos on welcome to video while presenting to the world that he was this hard-working guy who needed the funds to adopt her excellent Another guy that was caught with Welcome to Video on his computer had 450,000 hours of CP on his hard drives. 450,000 hours. You could watch his collection of videos for 51 years without ever repeating or stopping for a single second. 51 years. What the fuck? How does... What the... So we, so to be honest, so we're just worried about the wrong things. Cause why is shit like this even able to even happen? How does it get this bad? We're worried about other things and it's stuff like this. That is that 51 years worth of cause like five, one. Another man, a father of two, was caught being a buyer of Welcome to Video, and when they went to arrest him in his house, they found hidden cameras all over his house to film his children's friends when they came over to shower and use the restroom. So Welcome to Video was a CP operation that led hundreds of people being arrested from oh all over God. the world and was used internationally. At least 300 were arrested in the U.S., as well as other arrests were made in Finland, France, U.K., Italy, Sweden, Canada, Saudi Arabia, in total at least 38 different countries. It's estimated that there were over a million registered users. When it came to Welcome to Video's founder, though, the judge in South Korea said he's young. He was 21 when he started. He's 23 when he was caught, similar to the doctor and God God. He's he, adult. Yes, but he has no criminal history. Kill and him. he's reflecting on Bro, himself. What are you Kill him. About? He also has a wife that he must support. Kill him. He was given 18 months in prison. 18. I just don't understand. I, I don't get it. I just don't I just don't understand. I don't understand. I don't I don't get it. The 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 the, 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 the mental fortitude to bring yourself to say he's young and then end that statement with eighteen months when literally the nigga is involved with young people less that possibly less than 18 months are going through shit like this 
You one of them. Because there's no way. There's no plausible way. Because at this point, I'm just like, all right, if you want that type of time and to give somebody this little ass, little ass time frame, you was one of them. You were one of them. Because no, what the fuck? Teen, one eight. The fuck? Not two years. Like one year and a few, one and a half years. Mm. Two years just don't care about. Yeah. Well, the don't judges don't care. Judges the don't give a citizens fuck. Citizens care a lot. Judges don't give a right. fuck. Yeah. That's crazy. He was even asked why he created the website and he responded, well, I thought child videos would make more money than Shut adult videos. Shut the fuck up. Even his dad said, it's not like he killed somebody. What's the big deal? I'm just. Your whole family out of here. We going, we need, no. Your dad and you, y'all need to get the fuck out of here. And y'all want, and y'all, y'all want to subject the women in their, in their lives that they had to be supported by. Just not going to let him use the computer anymore. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Side note, the laws in South Korea are horrendously written when it comes to crimes against children, but not just like South Korea thinks like this. It's just the law. I mean, there were massive petitions nonstop. Every South Korean is so confused because they were saying, we get longer time for smoking weed in Korea. Like, what are you, who are you guys protecting in this country? Like, What the fuck? 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 That don't make no fucking sense. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. That really does not make any sense. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you shitting me? It doesn't make any sense. Like, yo. This infuriates me. A lot of Koreans were saying, send him to the U.S. because the U.S. wanted him. The U.S. said, extradite him to us. Uh -huh. We're going to charge him in the United States. And if he was charged in the U.S., he's looking at like 75 years to life and probably going to get murdered in prison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. South Koreans were saying, send him, extradite him. He's going to get his shit rocked in prison. That's what the netizen comments were reading. Yeah. South Koreans were protesting, arguing, who are these laws made for? Yeah, They're like, not made for the citizens. They're <clears throat> not made for the children. A lot of netizens asked, South Korean netizens were asking, it feels like the judges won't change the laws because they participate in these activities. And if they get caught, they don't want harsh punishments. That's what it feels like, because why else would you not change it? Like, yeah, like, it I doesn't don't, make any sense. It doesn't sense. make any sense. South Korea denied the U.S.'s request for extradition. Of course they fucking did. Because why not? Yeah. They said that they needed to investigate him for for illegal gambling. Gambling is illegal in South Korea. And they said he used some of his profits from Welcome to Video to gamble. And that's illegal. Yeah. Like the he made a few million itch. dollars while the site was up, which is crazy. And uh, he used some of that money to gamble. And he was sentenced to two years additionally, which is six more months than what he got for the distribution of CP. So illegal gambling. He got two years. For CP and running one of the craziest dark web CP websites, he got a year and a half. Yeah, and he was not extradited to the U.S. Wait, so when was this? This was 2018, a year before. God, then God, is and the he doctor. out? Yeah, I think so. The fuck yeah. is he doing? So, uh, where, where is he at? What? It's it's absolutely insane. Yeah. So if there's any comparison to the amount of time that the doctor and God God are going to get, this was the best case reference. And <clears> South <throat> Koreans were terrified. I mean, they were scared that this was going to happen again. Netizens were commenting, when I played Monopoly growing up, I used to wonder if there really was such a thing as get out of jail cards and mm. if they existed in real life. Mm -hmm. And it turns out they do. In our country, Korea, it's just called having a peace. Hmm. Prosecutors requested Real life shit. sentences for both, Real arguing shit, that these bro. crimes were unprecedented in history and that Cho, the doctor, clearly had zero remorse. Netizens really hoped that the government would listen. I mean, they were commenting, I hope these two get sent to the nth circle of hell. Mm -hmm. And in the end, the doctor, Cho, was sentenced to 45 years in prison. That's not enough. That's it. The judge said his behavior has caused extreme pain on the victims and they are demanding of severe punishment. So I guess in their minds, technically compared to the previous cases, like Welcome to Video, it was a lengthier sentence, but it's really nothing in the grand scheme of things. Exactly. It would later be appealed and he would get 42 years. Meanwhile, God God was sentenced to only 34 years in prison. It's speculated that he was actually given less time because he didn't have strong financial gains from his crimes, which I feel like the opposite 
Mm-hmm. It's like he's even, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of netizens argue he's worse because he wasn't even doing it for money. He was literally doing it for the Just sake for of the it. fuck of it. Just for the One victim fu- said, why can't they just seek the death penalty against them? What happens if they get released for being model prisoners? Then what? Exactly. And then August 2021, what? a blog went up on Naver and it was titled, I'm Choju Bin, a.k.a. The Doctor of Telegram. There would be a total of six articles posted and the blog would open. I opened this blog and Instagram account as channels to express my opinion, which is the truth. I know I'm offending people writing this stuff, but I'm not trying to deny my sins. I want to selflessly admit what I did wrong. Wait, Cho- this was when well, he's in jail? Yeah. What? Ch- his dad was doing it for him. What? Cho admitted that he produced and distributed abusive material. However, he did not agree that the chat rooms were like a crime ring. He also believed that because some of the evidence was illegally collected by the police, that meant that he can't really be charged with that evidence. He can't like that would that shouldn't have been in the trial. When it comes to his sentencing, Cho, the doctor, asked us the question of he has the public. It's so funny. Yeah. Like, OK, you're doing illegal shit. Yeah, that's illegal. Yeah. So you're not following the law. And now you turn around, you're like, by law, those are not legal. So the police can't legally. Yeah, yeah. it's like, what? it's so dumb. It's so dumb. And he asks the public, the trial is over and I can't turn back time. Even if I talk for 100 days, it's not going to do me any good. So trust me just once. Let go of your doubts. 42 years in prison. That's the weight I have to bear. Was what I did really that bad? And also, is it okay to mock someone like this? You said what you did, what you, you asked me what you did was really that bad. I would say no, it wasn't that bad. Because it, it was more than that bad. It was even more that bad. It was badder. The baddest. You shouldn't get 42. You should get 42 bullet holes in your body. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Are you dumb? Like, what? Like, what are we doing? What are we, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, what is happening? What is going on? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Does this make sense? Do you think this case is resolved because of my sentence? Oh my God. No, like, it's wrong. Bro, you're not a fucking suit. You're not Lex Luger, nigga. Okay? You are just, you are just you. A freaky fuck that got caught. It needs to go on the ground. What the fuck are we talking about? This even shows more that he has no concept of what he did. It's unfair to receive... I thought you were smart. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Such a long sentence. He stated that the victim's statements were not true and that he was unfairly and heavily... Shut up. He said, the sentence against me is a declaration that the law has been defeated by public opinion. Well, declare this dick. Shut the fuck up. He has zero remorse, and I don't think any of them are going to get any vigilante justice in prison either. Probably. South Korea has pretty relaxed prisons compared to the U.S., and there does not seem to be a strong association with offenders getting poetic justice behind bars. The Dr. Cho even had time in prison to make a pen pal. Do you guys remember the child star killer case we covered recently? A child star married a man, ended up cheating on him, mm-hmm. and he mysteriously died in a cliff jumping incident. He became her pen pal giving her tips on how not to incriminate herself and how she should not talk to the police. She should not work with the police. Mm. So yeah, I don't don't think he feels any remorse. Mm. Mm. One citizen mm. wrote, since our country does not have the willpower to punish these criminals, at least send them to the US or send them to North Korea. Send them to the correctional centers there. We don't have to spend our money, our taxpayer money. We can just outsource these things since it doesn't seem like we're going to improve our system anytime soon. There were some small amendments made to the CP laws in South Korea after this case. They made changes so that possessing, purchasing, and viewing illegal content would have imprisonment up to three years, or you could be fined $23,000. Those who plan to commit essay, so you know how in the chat rooms they're like planning to commit essay. Wait, you only get three years? Yeah. So those who plan to commit essay would be sentenced to up to three years, and the age of consent was raised from 13 to 16 years old. But is this really enough to stop the chat rooms? No. Reporter Kim from the first episode said, every day there were dozens of different chat rooms appearing and disappearing, copycat rooms, spinoff rooms. I mean, at the time of our investigation, there were hundreds of rooms with some variation of the nth room in their names, even if they weren't run by God God. Like Project N, 
Project N was a chat room on Telegram that was created by Pe Muge, and he would essay middle school girls, post the footage into his room. He produced and distributed 76 different pieces of content. He was only given five years in prison. Or there's another case dubbed the second Enthroom case. Ten men, including middle school and high school students, were arrested for distributing CP through Discord. So not Telegram, but Discord. They originally ran their CP operations on Telegram, but after God God and the doctor were arrested, they moved their operation to Discord. Now, this particular case was really disturbing for South Korea because the, quote, producers in the operation were minors themselves. Mm. Yeah, see, like that's said it, the, the examples. The, yeah. And the consequences are so low. For minors in Korea, yeah. And they were selling these videos, like full essay videos, for $8, $23. And it wasn't just in Korea. November 23rd of 2022, an Australian who is ethnically Korean, Lee Sung Il, was accused of threatening underage girls and creating videos of them to spread on Telegram, just like God God and Park Sa. He operated close to 30 Telegram chat rooms that were very, very similar to the doctor's rooms. Those are just the ones that we know of right now. But who's to say there aren't more? I mean, I don't think that that ended with the doctor or God God. But that is what we have with the nth rooms mm. and the doctor's rooms. What are your thoughts? Please stay safe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. You have a good day, Stephanie. What I think about this, I think about these people need to be put in the fucking ground. That's what I think. And also, I, I'd reiterate, protect your to children, protect your family, bro, because the world does not give a fuck about them. Like that's some real, that's real shit right there. I, I, this last week of learning about this stuff is just like, cause this shit is disgusting. You gotta protect the kids, bro. Like, I ain't man. Nah, nah, that's fucking nuts. This is fucking nuts. This shit was heavy as hell. I apologize if y'all made it this far and y'all got a heavy weight on your shoulders. I do apologize. I'm not finna watch the third one. The third one was the animal nth room. I'm not watching that. I really hope I don't even bring myself to watch that anytime soon or at all. But yeah, um, this is going to be the only video for today. This was a lot. I'm not even going to lie. Um, shit. I hope you guys, I'm not even going, I don't know, bro. Y'all stay safe. Don't be a freaky fuck. Don't be weird. And please protect yourself. I see why a lot of people look at men as the scum of the earth. Because a lot of these motherfuckers do not make our gender look good at all. And I understand. Men are fucking disgusting. Because what the fuck?